including the African Renaissance Fund for the first and the second quarter, 2021-2022 uh, financial year. Thereafter, we'll have closure. Can we have one member moving for the adoption of the agenda? Honorable Faber. Thank you, Honorable Faber, for moving. Do we have a seconder? Second, Chair. Well, thank you very much uh, for the the support, man. So that is our our agenda for today. Recording in uh, progress. So sorry, sorry, members. Chair. Sorry, Chair. Yes. Yes, it's Honorable Mpanza. Yes, Honorable Mpanza. Yes, Chair. Uh, good morning to you and the members. Uh, on the apologies, Chair. Uh, we are still going to. To, to come to the apologies. Oh, all right. No, that's fine, Chief. Thanks. Yes. Let's first just do the opening remarks. And then we'll, we'll come to the apologies here. Is that okay, Honorable Mbanza? It doesn't look like Honorable Mbanza. Yes, 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 Chair. Yeah. Yes, Chair. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Honorable members, I take this opportunity to welcome the rest of you as the collective of the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on International Relations and Cooperation. I hope that all of us have enjoyed the festive season and that we have rested. And I hope that we have uh, invested time to be with our families, with our friends, despite the difficulties that we have to go through as a nation. The difficulty of people getting into December holidays whilst poverty is forever increasing. The difficulty that people go into December holidays, unemployment continues unabated. The difficulty of our people having to contend and acclimatize with the new conditions under which they have to enjoy their holidays under the COVID um, conditions. And at a, a global level, the difficulties of some of the worrisome incidents relating to developments in other countries, this may relate to the tensions that are arising particularly in the African continent, we see emergence of some worrisome developments, in some instances having coups happening, and so on and so forth. But we hope that uh, in all the challenges that we face... Your call has been placed on hold. Please we wait. have been... I hope that in all these difficulties that Your we Your call has been placed facing, on hold. Please wait. I wonder who is that. Can I just Your request on our members on hold. Please wait. and everybody else who is on the platform to, to mute so that we focus on the job at hand. Thank you very much. I was saying that despite the challenges that we face as a people, as a nation, as the continent and as the world, it is important to continue to have hope because in hope, we know that embedded in it is the vision to achieve a just world order. The hope that is driven by the need for us to lay a solid basis and a foundation for future generations to inherit practical efforts of having taken made, made strides in achieving a peaceful world order. In addition to that, future generations that will inherit from the current generations, a world order in which the imbalances in as far as the economy is concerned have been vastly addressed, in which the majority of people and in this instance, in our instance in South Africa, it will be blacks in general and Africans in particular. 
it can begin to celebrate in tangible terms the achievements of their efforts in bettering uh, their lives. We all know, honorable members, that uh, this coming weekend, there's going to be an AU summit on the 5th and the 6th of, of February. And we also know that uh, this summit's uh, theme is uh, building resilience in nutrition on the African continent, accelerating the human capital, social and economic uh, development. We hope that the summit will, among other things, practically and concretely focus on necessary quantification of the achievements that we have made as a continent in responding to many other challenges that are facing us as a continent, and importantly, the need for us to repel tendencies of Afro-pessimism. We hope that the African uh, Union, when it meets over the weekend, it will also look beyond just having the coronavirus as a challenge, but it will earnestly focus on the reality that is not God made, that as Africans, we do not have the necessary technology to respond to challenges such as uh, COVID-19 that, that will go deep into uh, this particular matters and come up with practical uh, measures that will add to what is already achieved by the African continent to dwell deeper into science so that science becomes not only the sole tool for Western countries to direct the entire world and indirectly continue to impose imperialism on us, but rather that as Africans will have the capacity to develop our own skills in as far as uh, dealing with science to respond to the challenges that face humanity. Uh, is, uh, is concerned. It is also our hope that the summit will also look at how we can practically permanently bring to an end a tendency embedded in the African continent, clearly engineered outside the African continent, the coup d'etats that take place in some of the countries in our continent and deal with this particular matter in a way where the rest of the states will accept that the only way out of the challenges that we face cannot be coup d'etats, but rather it must be acceptable democratic <laughs> methods of transitions of government from one party to another. So we hope that uh, uh, that will be addressed. We also hope that the African Union will deal with this matter where a controversial decision somehow was arrived at mm. by a EU commission. In this instance, uh, by Mr. Musafaki Mohammed whose proposal resulted in the granting of observer status to Israel. So we hope that uh, the African Union will discuss this matter so that there can be a position that is adopted by the entire uh, African uh, continent. We know that our own South African government did issue a statement and a position through our minister, Minister Naledi Pando, when unambiguously South Africa demonstrated its attitude towards not accepting this proposal, which resulted in Israel being offered a 
of be given an, an observer uh, status. This is important to be done so that somewhere in the future we can move beyond this matter of the conflict between Israel and Palestine. Somewhere in future we can achieve a situation where both Palestine will, and Israel uh, will exist independently uh, from uh, each other as states and respecting each other as uh, sovereign states where people can live in peace and there will be prosperity for all. So we hope that uh, the summit of the African Union that is taking place will also look at some of uh, this particular matters. Uh, we must also, honorable so members. Oh, I, I don't know what is happening because we have made a request that uh, uh, people also must, must, must mute, but it doesn't look like. Chairperson, Honorable Father, can I maybe just do, make a suggestion? Yes, Honorable Father. Yes, Chairperson, maybe that somehow, I, I don't know who's on IT now, but that you are the only speaker at this stage that everyone else gets muted. I think it will just make it much easier for you and convenient for all other people on the system. So okay. The type of interruptions. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much, Anna. I think that's a progressive proposal. IT, I'm sure you have uh, listened to the proposal and we agree to that. Lastly, Honorable Members, we must just take note that uh, the AU will be chaired by Senegal uh, this year. And we, we hope that um, it can use its 2022 theme to emphasize the importance of linking the matter of. Um, and nutrition to the development, overall development of the agricultural sector uh, in the African continent, because you can't have people nutrition without a very strong agricultural sector. So capacities that exist within the African continent will have to be identified and make sure that we use the best that we have and with our weaknesses uh, that we have as opportunities to advance further uh, the African agenda. Uh, on the sports front in the African continent, we know that we, we have now reached the semi-final stage. We wish all the remaining uh, four countries luck. Unfortunately, in South Africa, we are not there under some circumstances that will continue to be for a matter of debate. And we hope that the finals uh, will go very, very well. And the incident that occurred uh, two weeks ago in, in Cameroon, where lives were lost at the stadium as a result of uh, a stampede, which was a consequence clearly of poor planning, uh, will not uh, happen again. And everybody else will then enjoy the games as they are unfolding uh, in the African continent. And we hope that uh, the leaders of, of CAF can also continue to say in economic terms, in economic terms, how do we make use of the Confederation of African Soccer Tournament to make sure that we turn around the, the economy, but more importantly, we, we do necessary rebranding of the African uh, continent so that the excitement and the focus and the passion uh, it can be the same as the teams uh, that are playing in European leagues uh, together with us aspiring to actually surpass them in as far as the quality, uh, the passion, the focus is concerned on not only soccer but all other sporting codes uh, in the African continent. Uh, we are now on apologies on our old members. We have done the opening, the adoption of the agenda. Uh, we have an apology from uh, Minister Pando. Uh, 
she will not be with us and honorable Otis will be with us today leading the team uh, from the department honorable Panza, over to you no thanks very much chair uh, i also want to convey the apologies of honorable muela uh, who requested me to convey to, to the chair and the committee that uh, at 11 we will request to be recused because it's got a, a doctor's appointment but chair also can i have your indulgence um i see in in the participants there's someone who's using a landline number and the uh, chair we we agreed in in previous meetings that people must identify themselves mustn't use numbers and gadgets so that we don't have uh, intruders in your in in in, in your committee chair uh, participating and then uh, they are not supposed to be in the meeting so i think if uh, it can also find a way of addressing uh, that person uh, or remove the particular person if she he or she does not uh, identify himself or herself thanks very much person Thank you. Zero double one two seven eight three one six double four one eight. Who is this? Zero double one two seven eight two three one six double four one eight. Who is this, please? Okay. IT, then you will attend to. Uh, this number so that we can proceed with our meeting without any hindrance. Administrator, can you give us other apologies if there are any? Uh, thank you, Chair. We, we, we have three apologies. Chair. The first one from the Minister, as you had already noted, she is uh, attending the ordinary session of the African Union in Addis Ababa. And then the second apologies from the Minister, Masha Kodramini. She's attending the working visit with the president in Mozambique. And then the third apology is from Honorable Chedi, who has a by-election in KZN, Chair. Uh, thank you, Chair. With your permission, Chair, I'm going to remove the person joining the meeting with 011, Chair. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Honorable Meshwe Muruti. Uh, good morning, Chairperson and all colleagues. I request to be excused at 12 o'clock for another meeting, sir. Thank you. There's a hand of the host. The hand of the host. Oh, Chair, that, that was my hand. I'll, lo I'll lower it down, Chair. Okay. It was at the time when I wanted to remove the O1 number, Chair. Okay, no problem. Honorable members, we, we, we move now to the next item, which is item number four, briefing on performance and financial report of the department and that of the African Renaissance Fund for second and first quarter 2021-2022. Over to you, Honorable Deputy Minister and your team. We are officially welcoming you with your team of uh, bureaucrats and revocrats uh, combined together. The time is now yours to make a, a presentation after which we will then engage. Uh, no, thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Chairperson. And let me uh, give uh, good uh, wishes also to members of the uh, Portfolio Committee uh, for the year 2022. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, thank you very much for acknowledging also the apology of our minister who, of course, uh, leads the South African delegation uh, to the African Union. Um, Chairperson, uh, the Ambassador Lossi, who is our acting uh, Director General, will ordinarily lead the team that will uh, take the PC in confidence on the financial uh, 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 performance uh, of uh, DERCO uh, for the period under, under review. I thought I must just emphasize, uh, Honorable Chairperson and members, uh, that um, as we pursue uh, multilateralism uh, and to maximally utilize 
the global governance uh, institution, uh, of course, uh, with the uh, United Nations at its uh, pedestal, uh, we do so, uh, Jefferson, uh, utilizing uh, an array of uh, other multilateral uh, organizations. Um, and as at the end of uh, September 2021, 20, uh, uh, South Africa, for example, was represented in 65 positions uh, across the uh, multilateral uh, uh, system. Uh, during this uh, period under review, uh, Jefferson, uh, we also found uh, ourselves playing a pivotal role in uh, 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 south to south um, institutions uh, like, for example, your BRICS, uh, IPSA, IHORA, and the uh, non, non uh, aligned movement as a way to deepen both south to south cooperation, but as, as a means also to underpin and sentiment uh, our pan African uh, outlook, which, which uh, obviously is the paramount pillar of our uh, foreign uh, policy uh, priority. I think the Honorable Chairperson have raised a very pertinent issue as it relates to the ongoing debate that South Africa uh, in conjunction with uh, India have put forward in multilateral uh, forums, in particular at the World Trade Organization as it relates to the intellectual uh, temporary property uh, rights waiver uh, to allow uh, African uh, and the underdeveloped uh, world largely um, to be able to have the, the, the interim uh, uh, privilege to produce um, uh, local uh, vaccines. That, of course, uh, Jefferson, evidently, uh, it's an ongoing uh, debate. But what we have done as South Africa, as part of our Ubuntu uh, diplomacy, uh, Jefferson, uh, we, we uh, have uh, committed to fund uh, the procurement of over 2 million doses of Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccines uh, for 26 uh, of other African uh, 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 countries, in particular, uh, those that are characterized as part of the less developed uh, countries. Uh, and we think that um, given the fact that most of these supplies will then be produced at uh, a South African uh, pharmaceutical uh, manufacturing plant uh, operated by Aspen, it will go a long way to solidify our pan-African uh, uh, orientation Further to that, uh, Chairperson, I, I thought it's important that the, the PC and yourself and, and members, uh, Chair, uh, gets brief about um, the fact that we have also committed to allocate an amount of uh, 50 million rand uh, for special intervention purposes as it relates to uh, the, the Cuban people who have experienced uh, real uh, uh, food security challenges uh, because of the extraterritorial uh, sanctions that has been leveled against the people of uh, Cuba by the uh, yeah, United States uh, of America. Having said that, uh, Jefferson, it will be my singular honor to, uh, at this juncture, uh, request uh, that uh, you assent to allow Ambassador Lossi, who is our acting uh, Director General, uh, to uh, introduce the presenters and actually uh, then to lead the actual presentation. Thank you very much. With your permission, Honorable Chair, if I may. No problem, uh, uh, my you. sister. As Lucy, you can proceed. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, Honorable Chair and Honorable Minister, uh, Honorable Members of the Portfolio Committee. Uh, good morning to our DM and colleagues who have joined uh, on the platform. Uh, our deputy minister has summarized uh, the, the, 
the presentation at a political level and uh, we have uh, uh, presenters who will then present uh, to the portfolio committee uh, on details on our performance as alluded to uh, on the agenda points. Uh, Ms. Lobe, uh, who's our acting chief operations officer, will present on the performance of the department Ms. Dinewo Matlako, uh, who's the head of the ARF, will present on the progress made and the performance uh, in quarter one and quarter two. And lastly, our acting chief financial officer, uh, Ms. Lengwe Bengu, uh, will present uh, on the financial status of the department on quarter one and Cora two, and after that we'll be able to uh, to receive any questions or engage with the portfolio committee. Without me wasting so much time, honorable chair, if you allow, I would now like to invite Madam Lobe to present uh, on quarter one and quarter two on the departmental performance. Thank you, and thank you, Deputy Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members of the Portfolio Committee. Let me join uh, the Deputy Minister as well as the Acting DG in wishing you well uh, during the year 2022. Honorable Chairperson, um, the performance information part of the report uh, will highlight compliance issues and towards the end, uh, of the report will of course deal with these issues while focusing mainly on the core function of the department with respect to program two, program three, as well as program four. Chairperson, let me state at the outset that the work of the department during this reporting period was deeply impacted upon by the COVID-19 pandemic. Diplomatic operations and relations have not been exempted from disruptions brought about by this global pandemic. This has also led to most countries introducing travel restrictions and resorting to digital diplomacy or the use of information and communication technology in the conduct of diplomacy in order to ensure business continuity. Chairperson, during quarter one and quarter two, uh, DECO continued to pursue our national interest through bilateral engagements, such as the structured bilateral mechanisms, the high level visits, and the various economic diplomacy initiatives undertaken at the level of our missions abroad. The engagements undertaken centered on the promotion of South Africa's national interest at the heart of which is tackling the triple challenge of poverty, unemployment, and inequality. We use this period, honorable members, to focus on areas of mutual interest between us and other countries as well. These issues included, but not limited to the fight against COVID-19 pandemic. We also use this period to exchange views with other democracies on a wide spectrum of bilateral and global issues of concern, and we will reflect on these uh, issues as part of this report. The overall impact of COVID-19, including travel restrictions, lockdown measures, and its socioeconomic bearing required a shift in focus regarding South Africa's structured bilateral engagements. During this period, South Africa had to reach out to the international community, particularly to Ghana, support for its fight against uh, the pandemic, as well as to help, help stem the devastating economic fallout that was brought about by COVID-19. South Africa continued to accelerate its economic diplomacy through diligent work, even though most of our initiatives were negatively impacted upon, as I've already said, by the pandemic. This uh, also restricted physical interactions as we have known diplomacy over the years. In order to ensure business continuity, 
The department utilized digital platforms with the aim of growing regional and continental global trade as well as investment. During this period, honorable chairperson, the economic diplomacy initiatives as well as the image building activities undertaken by South African missions abroad were aimed at promoting amongst others, the country's economic interest, exploring investment opportunities, tourism promotions, skills development and cultural exchange uh, programs. For the purpose of this presentation, our report for each bilateral branch will have four categories, namely uh, political engagement, investment promotion, trade, and lastly, tourism. And Chairperson, you will see that it will be a bit different from the way we have been reporting. And this is as a result of us trying to reconfigure our targets in a manner that speaks to the issues that you have reflected earlier on in your opening remarks that has to do with our national uh, priorities. Chairperson, under program one, uh, with respect to uh, Africa, which is at the heart of our foreign policy, during the period under review, we've had political engagements with uh, countries in the continent and particularly focused on strengthening bilateral cooperation in the fields of agriculture and food security, health and under health, we particularly focused on a COVID-19 pandemic. We also focused on science and technology, on regional and global politics, on peace and security uh, on the continent, on issues of tourism, uh, minerals and energy, as well as transport and infrastructure. We also focused on the realization of patent requirements to enable the continent to manufacture the 100 million doses of vaccine as was uh, earlier on reported by uh, Deputy Minister Bortes, which are estimated to be required by the continent to have an impact against the pandemic. We focused on the finalization of outstanding memoranda of understanding and agreements with countries in the continent, uh, we focused on our role as a facilitator in Lesotho's political conflict. We paid uh, particular attention on the situation that uh, has emerged in the northern part of Mozambique and also the impasse regarding the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam negotiations. Chairperson, under this a, 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 a part of the program where we are dealing with um, political engagements. Under Americas and Europe, uh, the department focused on the security situation on the continent. We also focused on COVID-19 related matters, including funding uh, 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 and uh, PP equipment, strategies to assist Africa to manufacture vaccines to combat the pandemic, support for the trade related intellectual property rights, otherwise known as TRIPS waiver, as well as post COVID-19 economic recovery because the view of everyone in the world is for us to have a possibility of building a back better beyond COVID-19. We use this period to reaffirm the need to continue to support humanitarian effort and for the important role of regional institutions and the regional peacemaking initiatives within our overall uh, peace continuum. We also focused on regional and national priorities, as well as the promotion of women's economic empowerment. And uh, with respect to this, we particularly focused on issues of uh, women's financial and economic inclusion. We focused on the commitment of human rights, the importance of human rights council, and the importance of the elimination of all forms of racism. And uh, honorable members uh, would recall that this work is particularly important to South Africa as a result of the fact that this is where the first uh, anti-racism conference was held uh, 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 in Durban uh, some years ago. 
We focused on the need uh, for strengthened partnerships based on solidarity and cooperation, which is based on the development priorities set by the African Union and particularly, which are part of the uh, Agenda 2063, and also uh, focused on issues relating to civil unrest that took place in KwaZulu-Natal and certain parts of Gauteng uh, uh, during uh, July 2021, also trying to ascertain uh, the investors of the fact that South Africa, it is still a country uh, 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 for investments. Under Asia and Middle East on political engagements, we focused on uh, new areas of cooperation regarding youth and women's economic empowerment, and particularly, again, focusing on issues of women's uh, economic and financial inclusion, but using a, a, a digital technology, also focusing on small business development and social safety net programs that would benefit uh, women-led enterprises. We focused on global uh, COVID-19 response, which included re uh, economic recovery and the need for equity in access to vaccines and highlighted the need for affordability uh, of uh, vaccines. We focused chairperson on uh, our support for the Palestinian statehood, uh, also developments with the AU and initiatives in the UN uh, context uh, in support of uh, the work that we are doing as a country. We also paid a particular attention to diversification of trade, identification of new trade opportunities for exploration. We can report to the portfolio committee that uh, through the work that we have done during uh, this reporting period, we are able to improve access of uh, a South African agricultural and dairy products to markets in the region. Uh, we have used a, a preferential trade agreements with South African Custom Union as part of uh, the work that strengthens our economic diplomacy uh, within this region. Uh, we focused on areas of cooperation between Africa and Asia with regards to uh, climate change and played a key role in a COP, a, a, a COP26 and also focused on progress on the uh, Mzivumbu Water and Northern Cape Small Harbor Development Projects, with it, which is part of the initiatives that has emerged as a result of the work that we are doing uh, in this uh, uh, region. Chairperson on the regional investment strategies in Africa, uh, we have ensured that uh, we focus on investment opportunities for South Africa which uh, focused on priority interventions aimed at restoring growth and creation of uh, uh, jobs uh, uh, in, in, uh, in the country. We've had discussions uh, against the backdrop of the negative economic situation as a result of COVID-19 pandemic and also focused on challenges experienced by South African companies operating in the continent. We've reported on this meta chairperson, if you remember, uh, during our uh, annual, uh, the presentation of our annual uh, report in 2021. We've also used this period to focus on investment from African countries into South Africa, uh, which of course remain limited. However, we have noted that during quarter one and quarter two, uh, there has been a, a huge uh, improvement as a result of the potential in the region for South African investment across almost all uh, uh, sectors of the economy. Uh, in investment outreach in initiatives during this period focused on priority interventions aimed at restoring growth and creating jobs. And uh, this included, but not limited to a uh, provision of support for South Africa's companies operating in the continent, exchanging views on cooperation and investment opportunities between the continent and our country, collaboration on investment promotion, facilitation and post-investment support uh, of South African uh, businesses, support to South African investors in countries, particularly uh, in Zimbabwe, uh, that are facing ongoing regulatory challenges in their operations. And lastly, uh, we've had meetings between South African airline companies and host governments to look at 
opening air passages between uh, uh, these countries and South Africa. We've also had discussions which focused on uh, sectors such as transport, ICT, energy and renewable energy, telecommunication, manufacturing, mining, waste management, the list is endless, but this is just uh, to summarize the kind of work that we have been uh, doing on uh, investment strategies in the continent. Chairperson on uh, investment strategies in Americas and Europe. Uh, we have pursued investment opportunities for South Africa, uh, uh, although economic activities have still not yet returned to normal uh, pre-COVID levels, but we have used uh, digital platforms to explore uh, su and, and support our uh, uh, work uh, in this regard. The, the, the unfortunate events in early July 2021 uh, of uh, unrest uh, in some parts of our country are viewed in, in a serious negative light by important trade and investment uh, countries. And let me add, Chair, by saying that our missions abroad have been playing a key role in making sure that we are certain investors uh, of the stability in the country. Investment outreach initiatives focused on priority interventions aimed at restoring growth and creating jobs. This included the meetings that we've had, uh, webinars and engagements with key stakeholders within South Africa, and also introducing these key stakeholders uh, uh, to markets abroad, showcasing opportunities that are available for new investors and foreign investors in South Africa. Uh, emphasis on the fact that South Africa is open for business and a call on the businesses to activate their existing networks and revisit strategies to revive interest in the South African goods. Uh, expansion of companies in the region uh, into Africa, supporting the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. Discussions on training and skills development in the local government systems and running of uh, municipal establishments because we are of a view that even though uh, we uh, law investors at the level of a, a national government, but at the end of the day, investments happen at local levels and there's a need for us to always focus on how we improve the skills uh, of our um, uh, uh, patriots at uh, this particular level. In incentives and opportunities offered by South African government to those seeking to expand their footprint on the continent and lastly discussions focused on sectors such as agriculture, infrastructure, pharmaceutical industry, auto, automotive, maritime, and shipbuilding, as well as technology sharing between us and uh, countries uh, in the Americas and Europe. On investments in Asia and the Middle East, uh, we pursued investment opportunities for South Africa, uh, even though we noted that uh, uh, Still, uh, we, we have not as yet returned to normal pre-COVID-19 uh, levels, but again, we continue to utilize the, avail the available tools in order for us to pursue uh, work in this regard. The general focus of economic in engagement was to explore new areas of possible investment and revision or expansion of existing investment for economic recovery post-COVID-19. We've had engagements with domestic stakeholders with the objective of developing an investment strategy in broader uh, uh, sectors within the region. Uh, we've had investment outreach initiatives focused on priority interventions aimed at restoring growth and creating jobs such as uh, investment aftercare with expansion of existing investment uh, in South Africa. And the aftercare work on investment is usually undertaken by our missions abroad. And I must say that they are doing a lot of good work in ensuring that we provide uh, the service to people who want to invest in our country. Investment seminars uh, on opportunities on the ocean economy uh, were also held during uh, this period. 
We uh, participated in economic and trade conferences. Uh, we also uh, uh, managed to address concerns regarding uh, visa or, or, or permits, automatic identification systems, and the uh, concerns around triple uh, B E E. Uh, we're able to uh, also look at investment and trade promotion of South African halal meat market. Chairperson and members of the portfolio committee will note that uh, when we gave the uh, annual report, we also touched on this particular issue as one of our key achievements. And we continue to build on the work that we started during uh, the last financial year. Province to province investment engagement resulting in an investment pledge of about uh, 208 million uh, to the Limpopo province is part of the work that we have done uh, with this region. And we've also had discussions focusing on the sectors that I have referred to previously on the uh, other report, making sure that our footprint is really about us tackling uh, the challenge of uh, the triple challenge of poverty, unemployment, and inequality. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, um, let me uh, now go to regional trade uh, strategies. And with respect to uh, the trade strategies in the continent, we have mainly focused on the COVID-19 pandemic and the fact that it, it has had a negative impact on our mission's ability to promote bilateral trade, as well as the private sector or traders to do business with their counterparts in the region. We uh, focused on restrictions on travel, closures of some government departments or agencies in host countries, among others, uh, 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 all uh, played a role in a uh, reduction of bilateral trade. Uh, Chairperson, this reflects that even though we have been uh, playing key roles in ensuring that we retain our uh, bilateral mechanisms, but we note that uh, COVID-19 has had huge impact in how uh, we have been dealing with issues that relates to trade uh, in the continent. Most countries are pursuing anti-import policies whilst conducting aggressive export uh, promotion programs. Uh, we've had dis uh, discussions on trade and initiatives that focused uh, on uh, uh, the meetings that we've had, which identified companies in host countries to discuss trade opportunities. We've had meetings with uh, South African uh, stakeholders to discuss opportunities to create trade with, uh, I mean, uh, with other African countries. And uh, we've also attended uh, some trade fairs in the continent with a view of promoting uh, uh, the, uh, the, the trade relations between us and uh, uh, countries in the continent. Chair, we've had a number of discussions uh, with uh, countries in the continent uh, on the various uh, sectors that are in the presentation. I've spoken about this earlier on when I was presenting on the other areas of our work. On Americas and Europe, uh, Chairperson, we know that although economic activity has not returned to normality, uh, trade opportunities for uh, South Africa, mostly through uh, virtual engagements, were uh, explored. We've had trade discussions and initiatives that were focusing, uh, amongst others, on a platform that will create an opportunity for South African women in business to interact with other women across the globe. And I must say that during quarter one and quarter two, our main focus has been on uh, women's uh, economic and financial inclusion as part of uh, the AU's uh, a, a, a decade. Chairperson, we have explored potential areas of possible collaboration on issues of mutual interest with other uh, countries in this region. We've uh, coordinated and matched business interests to facilitate potential business opportunities. We've had discussions around expansion of trade potential of some 
companies using new technology and the attraction of additional domestic and foreign investment towards the creation of new jobs, especially in the rural uh, areas. Uh, we've had uh, uh, to pursue opportunities in collaboration uh, on e uh, ocean economy and in ship in ship building with local shipyards as well as possible collaboration in pump energy. Uh, we focused on core investments in high priority infrastructure projects in South Africa and uh, the continent in general, and also showcase South Africa's manufacturing uh, capabilities and capacity to uh, various stakeholders as part of ad advo uh, as part of our advocacy uh, work uh, for the trips waiver that I have referred to earlier on, and the DM has also spoken on the trips waiver. Again, we've had discussions on a number of issues, but of importance is the discussions that we've had, particularly around uh, aerospace, uh, on issues of mining, and on the issues of women economic and financial inclusion, as well as on issues such as the age, I mean, ocean uh, economy. On Asia and the Middle East on trade strategies, although economic uh, activities, as I've already said, are not yet, uh, uh, um, uh, has not as yet returned to normality, but we have pursued and explored a number of uh, initiatives with uh, this region. The overall objective of the engagement during the period under review was to identify sectors where trade relations may be solidified and possibly increased. We've had trade discussions and initiatives that focused on the delayed progress on the existing avocado protocol, which is caused by the pending verification of the South African avocado plan. This is something that we have been uh, pursuing for some time. Uh, we focus on the promotion of South African sweets and snack products, the identification the identified potential of importing and exporting of halal products, as I have uh, uh, reported earlier on, and the strengthening of trade partnerships. We've improved methods of increasing South African citrus fruit access to uh, this region, such as pre-clearance inspection of shipment and thanks to our um, uh, emissions uh, in this region for facilitating this kind of work. We have facilitated access uh, for South African uh, market uh, of sweet potato, avocado, grapefruit, and wine in the region and negotiated uh, some uh, potential bilateral trade agreements for the benefit of lowering tariffs on agricultural products. Uh, Chairperson, again, we've had numerous discussions uh, with this region around issues of uh, gender equality and economic inclusion of women and issues of youth uh, development. And we are hoping that the discussions that we've had, they will soon yield a positive result, um, result with respect uh, to the issues that I have uh, uh, reflected on. Honorable Chairperson, let, allow me to move to tourism promotion. In the continent, uh, we have noted that as a result of COVID-19 and uh, travel restrictions associated with the pandemic, uh, we've had a significant uh, a, a reduction on uh, our uh, tourism uh, industry. Uh, we have noted that tourism to South Africa from the region remain constrained due to COVID-19 restrictions coupled with the economic impact of the pandemic on the, uh, on the different economies uh, in the continent. The outlook for bilateral opportunities in the tourism sector in Africa is less than positive, particularly in part uh, as a result of the post-19 environment. Tourism from uh, the region's main, uh, tourism from the region remain uh, mainly for the purpose of seeking economic or trade opportunities in South Africa, followed by tourism focused on, on, on urban areas, shopping and medical uh, tourism. And also tourism, we've, had, we've also had tourism discussions and initiatives that focused on tourism revival and cooperation in the continent participation in tourism workshops, as well as engagements uh, with tour operators and airlines. 
tourism promotion in Americas and Europe. Uh, chairperson, our missions in the region reported on tourism events, taking into consideration the enormous and devastating impact, impact of uh, the global pandemic. And uh, we have noted from this report that this has had huge impact on our tourism sector in South Africa. Tourism initiatives focused on the hosting of and participation in tourism promotion events, mostly in the form of webinars where the various South African provinces were profiled uh, by highlighting the unique offerings and products in each of our provinces. Uh, we showcase South Africa's diverse tourism industry. We we, we were able to at least allay fears associated with traveling to a long haul destination uh, during COVID-19 pandemic and address, uh, uh, we, we managed to address some of the concerns around uh, 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 tourism that uh, our missions had to uh, deal with as part of facilitating uh, uh, this work. Information was uh, exchanged on tourism related matters, particularly around the impact of COVID-19 on the tourism uh, sector in countries in the region. South Africa's image was enhanced and its visibility promoted uh, by our mission and we resuscitated uh, uh, the resuscitation of flights between South Africa and destinations in the region also uh, contributed in uh, at least assisting us to uh, uh, promote uh, uh, tourism. Chairperson uh, uh, on Asia and Middle East, we again note the impact of COVID-19 and we know that our missions and relevant stakeholders uh, within our uh, system have embarked on utilizing alternative platforms to host and participate in local and international tourism promotion activities to maintain visibility of the South African brand in the tourism industry. Tourism initiatives uh, uh, for this region uh, focused on uh, participation in, vir in virtual tourism promotion activities by various uh, missions, innovative ways of promoting South Africa as a preferred tourism destination were also utilized uh, to attract tourists uh, to South Africa. We uh, had to also reassure uh, our own uh, um, local industries of uh, South Africa's uh, safety and health precautions in order for us to promote uh, uh, tourism abroad because we needed to have what I can call as a core where we speak uh, 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 one language in ensuring that people who comes from outside of the country still has confidence in South Africa being a tourist uh, destination. We have identified opportunities to maintain brand awareness in preparation for the resumption of open uh, global travel and also engagements with international airlines regarding the possibility of increasing flights to uh, South Africa. Now, in terms of uh, the regional integration, uh, South Africa assumed the chairship of SADC organ of politics, defense and security cooperation at the 41st Ordinary SADC Summit of Heads of State and Government. Uh, the summit, amongst other matters, approved the transformation of SADC parliamentary Forum, forum into a SADC regional parliament and its roadmap as a consultative and deliberative body with no lawmaking or other binding authority. Also approve the appointment of Mr. Elias Mpedima Fossi as the new executive secretary of uh, SADC, urged member states that have not yet signed or ratified the protocol on industry, the agreement on the operationalization of SADC Regional Development Fund and the protocol on trade in services to uh, do so, uh, recommended the extension of the mandate of the National Reform Authority for a period of six months we, uh, 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 regarding uh, the situation in Lesotho, also approved the Regional Indicative Strategic Development Plan 2020-2021. 
Chairperson, let me say before I move to program three, that all targets under program two were achieved with all uh, 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 this uh, uh, work that I have reported that focuses on uh, the areas that I have alluded to earlier on. With respect to program three, uh, which focuses on our uh, global governance, uh, we have not achieved a, a, a one target and the target relates to uh, us developing a strategy uh, that will focus on South Africa's uh, membership of international and international organizations. This is something that uh, internally we are dealing with. Uh, Chairperson, and I believe we'll be able to report to the portfolio committee in the coming period. Reports on the outcomes of multilateral and multi-state organizations reflecting South Africa's uh, participation and interest, including that of the African agenda on peace uh, and security, human rights, economic and social development. Under this uh, 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 part of the report chair, I will start with peace and security. Uh, during the reporting uh, period, uh, some of the activities that were undertaken included our participation in the peace building uh, commission where we've had engagements which mainly focused on ensuring post-conflict reconstruction and development in uh, countries uh, emerging from conflict as well as recognition that the COVID-19 pandemic has presented new challenges with peace building activities as uh, resources allocated for peace building and reconstruction have had to be channeled to other sectors such as uh, health care. Uh, chairperson on intergovernmental negotiations framework on the Security Council reform. We continue to participate uh, as South Africa uh, and uh, we have pursued uh, the objective of the reform of this institution of global governance and South Africa has also called for the reform process to uh, gain uh, momentum. Chairperson on the Ad Hoc Committee on Cybercrime, South Africa has together with BRICS uh, member states championed efforts to establish an international legally binding mechanism under the auspices of the UN to address uh, cyber crimes. On open meetings of the UN Security Council, the meetings of the UNSC were aimed at advancing international peace and security and emphasis was put on the importance of regional cooperation, particularly cooperation between the UN and the AU, as well as the peaceful resolution of uh, conflict uh, in the world. On the UN uh, General Assembly special session against uh, corruption, uh, we participated in the session and it was aimed at pursuing an international commitment by member states to acknowledge the need for greater political will to step up the fight against corruption. South Africa impressed on the need for enhanced international cooperation on matters of asset recovery, extradition, and mutual legal assistant, uh, assistance respectively. And uh, South Africa reiterated its commitment to the full and effective implementation of the United uh, Nations Convention Against uh, Corruption. Chairperson under the IAEA Board of Governance and General Conference, the following resolution amongst others on key issues reflecting progress made since the previous regular sessions were considered. The first one focusing on strengthening the agencies technical cooperation activities, strengthening the agency's activities related to nuclear science, technology and application, as well as strengthening the effectiveness and improving the efficiency of agency uh, safeguards. The general debate of the 76th session of the UN General Assembly 
uh, concern uh, were raised that the global community has not sustained the principle of solidarity and cooperation in securing equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines and that South Africa stressed that the international community must redouble its efforts to build a world free of racism and all forms of discrimination and stand united in uh, combating COVID-19 pandemic. On Commonwealth Foreign Affairs Minister's meeting, South Africa highlighted that the implementation of uh, sustainable development goals should form uh, the basic platform for recovery from a pandemic and uh, we put emphasis on the importance of vaccine equity and the call on all Commonwealth members to support the proposal made at the WTO for a temporary waiver uh, of certain provisions of the TRIPS agreement. Uh, on the seventh review of the UN Global Counterterrorism Strategy and the second high level meeting of heads of counterterrorism uh, agencies, the meeting adopted the revised UN Global Counterterrorism Strategy. South Africa, uh, in this uh, uh, session, particularly emphasized the importance of maintaining the new focus on extremism to violent extremism con uh, conducive to terrorism, to prevent exploitation of the term for political purposes and the violation of fundamental rights and freedoms. We also encourage the development of partnerships with regional organizations, given their appreciation and understanding of local and regional dynamics on human rights. Uh, as part of the work that we uh, have been doing, uh, we have provided an overview of a number of developments which resulted in heightened humanitarian uh, crisis, including the conflict in Gaza uh, between Israel and Palestinian Authority, the conflict in Ethiopia's Tigri region and the heightened food insecurity as a result of COVID-19 and the other protracted uh, conflict situations which are on the increase. We uh, reflected on review modalities of the UN humanitarian response report following the outcome of the WFP global review. Chairperson, we have also used uh, the period under review uh, under systems of global governance to reflect on the heightened food and nutrition insecurity, which continues across the world despite various humanitarian appeals by the UN and various international humanitarian organizations and uh, reflected South Africa's participation in the uh, uh, UN ECOSOC humanitarian affairs segment, the 47th session of the Human Rights Council, 20th anniversary of the adoption of the Deben Declaration and Program of Action, and the United Nations Food System Summit. A chairperson on economic and social development, uh, we focused on the development gains of uh, developing countries uh, that uh, we have uh, seen over uh, the past uh, 20 years or so, and we have seen that there has been a setback uh, as a result of COVID-19. Internationally, global rebalancing is uh, taking place as the world is becoming increasingly multipolar, multilateral uh, collaboration that was evident at the start of COVID-19 pandemic has slowly been replaced by narrow national self-interest and protectionism of vaccine availability in the midst of a global uh, pandemic and a, a coordination amongst developing countries spanning the world's time zone and the digital divide has proven to be especially uh, challenging uh, during this period. Um, Chairperson, we have focused on key multilateral and uh, plurilateral fora where we have utilized uh, uh, this uh, 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 fora to advance the president message and initiatives 
in his capacity as the African Union COVID-19 champion and the co-chair of the Act A uh, Facilitation Council, honorable members and the chairperson would remember that when we presented our annual report, we spent a, 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 a substantive time focusing on Act A Facilitation uh, Council. Chairperson, some key events during the reporting period included the 54th session of the Commission on Population and Development, unanimous adoption of the resolution on population food security, nutrition, and sustainable development. Uh, some, uh, some of the events included the Global Health Summit, uh, which adopted the Rome Declaration of Principles aimed at guiding joint action to prevent future health crises and to build a safer, fairer, and more equitable and sustainable world. We've also had the 74th session of the World Health Assembly uh, that has uh, uh, made a call to reiterate for global solidarity and collaboration to be better prepared for the next global health crisis. We've had an extended 44th session of the World Heritage Committee uh, where South Africa's participation was seen as strong opponent to advance uh, the Africa agenda. We've had the Foreign Policy and Global Health Initiative Ministerial Virtual Meeting. The meeting, amongst other matters, expressed the importance of solidarity and multilateral collaboration to mitigate the pandemic, sharing of resources and best practices, as well as to strengthen the resilience, preparedness, response uh, to health emergencies, and lastly, uh, the high-level political uh, forum on sustainable development. Uh, and the focus of this uh, high-level political forum was on sustainable and resilient recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic and getting the world on track to implement uh, the 2030 agenda of sustainable uh, development. Chairperson, on the reports on the implementation of South Africa's international reporting obligations, uh, one report on South Africa's international reporting obligation uh, uh, was uh, uh, compiled. Uh, we've had uh, on the 60, 60 positions on identified influential multilateral bodies maintained. At the end of September 2021, South Africa was represented at 65 positions across the multilateral system. Uh, rotation, retirement, and the ending of contract periods often result in fluctuation uh, in numbers, but our branch, local government, and continental agenda is observing uh, uh, this situation closely. Um, chairperson on monitoring reports on South Africa's contribution to the operationalization of identified Agenda 2063 flagship projects. Uh, we've uh, compiled one uh, monitoring uh, report on South Africa's contribution to the operationalization of identified uh, uh, flagship projects. And the report has been submitted to the AU. On assessment reports reflecting how the outcomes of Africa uh, partnerships are aligned to AU Agenda 2063. One assessment report was uh, uh, compiled reflecting how the outcomes of Africa partnerships are aligned uh, to Agenda 2063. On reports of South Africa's obligations to SADC and AU uh, fulfilled, a biannual report on South Africa's obligation towards the AU, which reflects the following uh, uh, engagements. It was uh, compiled uh, a EU conference on expanding Africa's vaccine manufacturing, uh, where discussion centered on, uh, amongst others, developing a short term strategy for Africa to manufacture COVID 19 vaccines, strengthening the continent's capacity uh, for vaccine manufacturing for future pandemics, uh, bolstering regional centers for excellence and research hubs. Friends of Multilateralism, Heads of State Roundtable uh, a, a discussion was also part of the report that we compiled, where, where, and the discussions focused on, the, on elevating political leadership for pandemic preparedness and response 
options for strengthened global governance and accountability. Chairperson, uh, the MasterCard Foundation and Africa Communicable Disease a, a, a Council launch of saving lives, saving economies, and saving schools a partnership a, to a vaccinate Africa is part of the work that was undertaken during this period, a partnership working towards ensuring that Africa has more access to vaccines, improve public health, economic recovery, and bring life back to, normal, to normalcy. And also we had an AU Bureau meeting on COVID-19 where updates were provided on funding and support for vaccines, which included the World Bank Group scaling up uh, finan financing uh, to Africa countries for the, uh, for the purchase of vaccines from either COVAX or other manufacturing, uh, manufacturers directly. A pipeline of 30 uh, projects amounting to about $2 billion for the Africa continent uh, it was being prepared under the 12 billion vaccine program from the International uh, Development uh, Association, IDA, and the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. And lastly, the African Development Bank Group created the COVID-19 response facility to assist its regional uh, member countries in fighting the pandemic. 100% of South Africa's commitment and efforts in order to resolve continental conflict uh, uh, honored. Uh, there were no commitments for South Africa to honor during uh, the reporting uh, period, but the branch uh, continued to monitor the situation closely. Chairperson on the reports on the outcomes of South-South uh, engagements reflecting South Africa's participation and interest, including that of the African agenda, um, an extraordinary non-aligned non-aligned movement a committee meeting uh, on Palestine was held where a political declaration was adopted. A concern was expressed regarding the latest developments and there was a call for an end to the illegal Israeli occupation and the restoration of justice and rise to the Palestinian people. And South Africa reaffirmed its long-standing solidarity with the Palestinian people. Uh, chairperson, we've also had the second BRICS Shepa uh, meeting where negotiations were entered into by Shepa regarding the text for the joint statement released during the foreign minister's meeting where outcomes and deliverables for the meeting were negotiated. We've had the fourth standalone meeting of BRICS ministers of foreign affairs. Uh, slash international relations. Uh, and uh, in this meeting, uh, the um, a media statement was adopted and a standalone joint statement on strengthening and reforming of the multilateral system uh, 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 during uh, the meeting of the ministers. And lastly, uh, further discussion on global and regional peace and security amongst other matters were discussed as part of uh, this uh, minister's meeting. BRICS meetings of uh, deputy uh, foreign minister, special envoy on the Middle East and North Africa, uh, statements were made during the meeting were mainly uh, 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 were focusing on the situation in Iraq, in Syria, in Libya, Lebanon, and the Persian Gulf, as well as on the Middle East peace process. And Chairperson, as you are aware, South Africa oh. has been doing a lot of work around uh, 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 this uh, particular process. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, on uh, uh, the IPSA Dialogue Forum, the focus of the dialogue included, amongst others, negotiations by the three IPSA partners on the draft text, particularly the amendment of paragraph 23 and 24 on the World Trade Organization, as well as uh, the G20, which were amended to represent the interest of IPSA and the announcement of the new amendments to be effected with regard to IPSA inaugural meeting of the IPSA national security advisors, as well as the reassignment of trade investment uh, trade working group. 
Uh, during the reporting period, we've had the 11th biannual meeting of the Committee of Senior Officials, which discussed, amongst others, the acceptance of Russia as an IORA dialogue partner, which includes five, uh, uh, or, or what we would uh, usually call P5 members, and establishment of the Tourism Resource Center in Oman and the creation of tourism platform for sharing best practices. Chair, if you look at what we reported under our bilateral relations, you'll see that there's a lot of synergy between what we do at the bilateral level and the kind of work we pursue in the different multilateral fora. We've had the third uh, meeting of the ad hoc committee concerning the eligibility and criteria for selecting the new uh, Secretary General of IORA. And the objective of the meeting was to endorse the draft terms of reference and an extras to be recommended to the Council of Ministers uh, for approval. I believe in the coming period, we'll be able to give a report with respect to this. Uh, we've had the 13th uh, BRICS uh, summit, the BRICS. Uh, the BRICS leaders welcomed the concrete deliverables under the BRICS chairship in 2021 with reference to the signing and or adoption of, uh, amongst others, the agreement on BRICS cooperation on remote uh, sensing uh, satellite uh, constellation, finalization of the agreement on BRICS cooperation and mutual administrative assistance in custom matters, BRICS counter Terrorism Action Plan, Action Plan 2021-2024 for Agricultural Cooperation, Innovation Cooperation Action Plan 2021-24, as well as the BRICS Alliance for Green Tourism. Chairperson, the BRICS Summit also focused on the COVID-19 pandemic and focused on uh, post-COVID-19 tourism and recovery uh, uh, plans with a view of building back better. Re and also recognition of the positive impact made by the redistribution of the COVID-19 vaccine to conquer the pandemic. On the non-aligned movement meter ministerial conference, the deliberations uh, focused on the reform of multilateral institutions, the COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on uh, the members of NAM, as well as the global community, uh, the Israel-Palestine uh, uh, conflict. Chairperson, we've had an outreach session of the G7 summit where South Africa called on G7 countries to help bridge the funding gap for testing, treatment, and vaccination against COVID-19. And South Africa also called for support for TRIPS waiver that I've spoken to earlier on, which would allow for the wider vac vaccine production to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. During the reporting period, we, we've had the G20 foreign and development ministerial meeting and the uh, key issues discussed uh, during the meeting included uh, the global governance and multilateralism as the appropriate platforms for addressing global challenges uh, uh, such as COVID-19 and for the, promote, uh, for the promotion of global economic uh, recovery as well as, Afri uh, as uh, um, Af uh, Afri I mean, agriculture and food uh, security. Chairperson, the meeting concluded with the adoption of two important documents. The other one focusing on uh, the, uh, uh, the first one being the Matera Declaration, which recognizes that poverty alleviation and food security are key to ending hunger and reducing uh, socioeconomic inequalities and for achieving SDG 2 uh, on zero hunger by uh, 2030 and a communique that, amongst others, recognized uh, the challenge in Africa, uh, as well as least develop, developed countries and small island states, and that uh, overcoming the pandemic is a precondition for stable and lasting uh, global uh, recovery. Chairperson, under the reporting period on North-South cooperation, we've had a meeting of uh, the G20 Sherpa, where the focus was, among others, on reiterating our call uh, on G20 members to support negotiations aimed at securing 
temporary a waiver on uh, 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 the trip uh, 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 issue that we've raised on uh, earlier on. Uh, we also focused on the debt. We called on the G20 to support an ambitious special drawing rise reallocation, including the target of at least a hundred billion US dollars by October 2021 to support vulnerable countries, including our continent. And we also focused on climate change, rejected the unilateral setting of targets outside multilateral environmental agreements, stating that uh, to enhance our ambition and achievement of our UN F triple C and CBD goals, developing countries require massively scaled up support in the form of finance, technology, and capacity building. We've also had a, a, a third uh, G20 Sherpa meeting uh, that amongst others uh, restated its position that the WHO should be at the center of any new pandemic preparedness structures, called for greater access two vaccines, including manufacturing capacity, and for the G20 support for the WTO negotiations on the trip waiver uh, that we have already spoken about. We've also supported current language on uh, women empowerment and introduced language on the prevention of gender violence during lockdown. This is particularly important to us because for the longest time we have been working hard to ensure that this recognition of a language that speaks to issues of uh, women's empowerment in uh, uh, the outcomes of uh, uh, G20. Chairperson, uh, that is uh, all from uh, program three. Allow me to uh, go through our work on uh, program four and our, I will start with public uh, diplomacy. In terms of our annual targets, we are required to have nine key messages that are distributed to missions on domestic and global developments. During quarter one, we've developed three messages and quarter two, we developed eight key messages. And uh, uh, honorable members and chairperson, the reason for the increase was also as a result of uh, the unrest uh, in KwaZulu-Natal and parts of Gauteng, and we had to, to intensify our work around messaging in order for us to allay fears, uh, particularly uh, 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 in the uh, uh, global community. We were expected to have 12 uh, public uh, participation programs, and we are on course. Uh, they are all achieved uh, for uh, the first uh, two quarters. We're supposed to have uh, uh, we're supposed to have 90 media statements. We've already had 24 uh, during quarter one and 32 during quarter uh, two. Again, uh, you would see that the increase is also as a result of the unrest that we experienced in July 2021. We are required to have nine opinion pieces. We, we have We've had two uh, during quarter one, and we've had uh, four uh, opinion pieces published uh, during uh, quarter two. Chairperson on uh, uh, protocol and consular services, we are expected to have 100% of protocol services rendered to all incoming and outgoing visits. We've had uh, uh, 13 protocol services uh, rendered during uh, uh, visits, which is 100% uh, 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 for that quarter. We've had eight protocol services rendered during uh, the visits, uh, 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 and it was eight visits, eight protocol services rendered. Uh, Chairperson, we are required to have 100% of consular service rendered. Uh, during quarter one, we've had 176 consular service rendered, which is 100% uh, of uh, what was required out of the department. We had 188 consular services rendered during quarter two, again, uh, constituting 100% of all the consular services uh, uh, rendered. Chairperson, in terms of legalization of documents, we are required to always be at 100% of legalization. During quarter one, we've had 13,388, and all the documents were legalized. During quarter two, we've had 14,355 of all documents uh, legalized. Chairperson, now allow me having focused uh, uh, on our um, Core function 
to now uh, go to uh, our support function in terms of program one administration. Now, in terms of this program, Chairperson, we are required to have four pro progress reports on the implementation of the digital strategy uh, during quarter one, a progress report on the implementation of the digital strategy reflecting achievement against four strategic objectives, uh, firstly being that of uh, modernizing data storage, application network, and uh, telephony cyber security infrastructure to automating digital business process and integrate business information systems uh, provided and supported all digital and information services, including skills uh, development uh, uh, training. We had noted particularly on this one that uh, with respect to the new ways of doing business, particularly issues that relate to, di to digital diplomacy, we had to upscale uh, our uh, skills and ensure that uh, we are able to provide a service that is requisite to the environment that we operate in. We're able to uh, create and, and enable and support uh, mobile and remote digital uh, capabilities and services for any time, anywhere access. And this accounts chairperson to how we managed to do the many uh, good things that I have reported under our core function. Uh, during quarter one, progress report on the implementation of, of the digital strategy focused on two objectives, uh, the modernization to us an ongoing process, modernization uh, of uh, data storage, application network, and telephony and cyber security infrastructure, automated digital business process, and integrated business uh, in, uh, information system, all of which has contributed uh, to a a greater degree in us uh, being able to, to utilize digital means uh, to do work. We were required to have four progress reports on the audit action plan during quarter one, one progress report on the audit action plan reflecting the progress on the uh, corrective measures and the implementation thereof uh, was uh, compiled. Uh, during quarter two, progress report on the audit action plan reflects the development of the new audit action plan, as well as progress on the implementation of our audit action plan. Chairperson on uh, the maintenance of ISO certified quality management system. There was no target for quarter one. For quarter two, uh, we uh, conducted a, re a recertification audit uh, yeah. and a certificate was issued. Uh, we are required to have two progress reports on the UN delivery of AUU and languages. Under quarter one, there was no target. Under uh, quarter two, a report on the delivery of AUU and languages covering the training programs as well as initiatives undertaken to adapt to a digital uh, approach. Chairperson, we were required to have two progress reports on the collaboration with partners to enrich training programs of the academy uh, under quarter one, a status report on the collaboration with their partners to enrich training uh, programs uh, included uh, amongst others, uh, academia, uh, diplomatic academies uh, uh, elsewhere in the world, research institutions, as well as state owned enterprises. We did not have a, a, a target for quarter two. And Chairperson, I believe, will be able to report uh, when we complete this work at the end of uh, uh, the uh, financial year. We were required to have six outreach initiatives to change behavior on, I mean, in relation to gender. We, under quarter one, we had one outreach initiative to support gender mainstreaming and organized and hosted a webinar on the realization of the sexual and reproductive reproductive health and rights of every African adolescent and youth in the okay. face of COVID-19. We've had three outreach initiatives under quota two uh, that supports gender mainstreaming by facilitating the Pan-African uh, Women's Day uh, commemoration okay. webinar that amongst others 
included uh, some of our um, uh, African uh, 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 countries where we were looking at uh, issues that included the responsive gender uh, uh, budgeting as part of the instruments that promote gender uh, uh, mainstreaming. We also launched the Charlotte Makleke African Women's Economic Justice and Sorry, Rights Initiative. Sorry, Charlotte, sorry to disrupt you. Ambassador Dramu, can you mute, please? So, love you, Charlotte. Thank you very much, Chairperson. And let me say on this one that the Charlotte Makleke African Women's Economic Justice and Rights Initiative have been well received, uh, and it is now part of the um, signature commitments by uh, Generation Equality, as well as led, also led by the uh, UN Women. We've had the inaugural Charlotte Makleke Minister's Breakfast with Women Ambassadors accredited uh, to South Africa. And through this breakfast, we were able to also ensure commitment uh, from resident embassies on the support and the need to invest in African uh, women. Chairperson, we were required to have two mentoring and job shadowing outreach initiatives, particularly targeting uh, young people. Under quarter one, we've had one monitoring, uh, mentoring and uh, job shadowing outreach uh, targeting young people. Uh, we organized and hosted a webinar that was uh, particularly focusing on, you, uh, on youth in diplomacy, enhancing representation and leadership of youth in foreign uh, uh, policy space. This, uh, the outcome of this uh, webinar chairperson was a report on the status of youth uh, in uh, international relations and uh, cooperation. Under quarter two, we, uh, we did not necessarily have a mentoring and job uh, shadowing program. However, we had a youth outreach initiative where the Office of uh, Deputy Minister Bortes uh, uh, had a collaboration with the University of KwaZulu-Natal with a view of further looking at a possibility uh, of uh, building our human capital as part of uh, uh, building uh, 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 youth uh, uh, leadership in the, in the country. Chairperson, we had uh, two strategic interventions, we were required to have two strategic interventions to strengthen the capacity of DECO to effectively and equitably implement the white paper on the rights uh, of uh, uh, persons with disabilities. Uh, under quarter one, we did not have a target. Under quarter two, we've had two strategic interventions where we've had a stakeholder consultation on the provision of reasonable accommodation for employees with disabilities. And uh, this stakeholder consultation also included uh, Microsoft because we needed to have a discussion with them on a program that could accommodate our uh, employees who are virtually impaired. We've also had an internal uh, stakeholders consultation to fast track the provision of assistive devices and universal access design for employees uh, with uh, disabilities. And these differ uh, from uh, one employee to the other based on the nature of their disability. Um, Chairperson, uh, we were required to have 100% uh, legal advice and uh, services rendered uh, under quota one. We've had 41 uh, legal advice and services uh, that were rendered, and this was uh, 40. Um, I mean, 100% because the 41 is what was received by Oxlar. We've had uh, 82 legal advice and services on domestic law rendered again constitute. 100%. On quarter two, we've had uh, 45 legal advice services on international law rendered and uh, 76 on domestic law rendered. And we have performed as required. We've provided 100% legal advice and uh, and, and services. Chairperson, uh, the report on our um, international law and domestic law obligations brings me to the end of my presentation. I will uh, then uh, hand over to the acting CFO if uh, the acting DG allows. 
uh, in order for her to proceed on our financials and to thank you and the committee for the opportunity uh, to present our report on quarter one and quarter two. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Through you, Honorable Chairperson, may I kindly invite uh, Madam Flingiwe Bengu to present the financial report, if you allow, Chair. Yes, we are in order, Acting DG. Thank you, Chairperson, and thank you, um, Acting DG. Um, good morning, Honorable Chairperson. Honorable members, honorable deputy minister, ladies and gentlemen. My presentation will start from uh, slide number 41. Um, in terms of the financial report for the department, if I may remind um, honorable chairperson and members that the budget that has been appropriated to the department is 6.5 billion, as you can see in slide number 41. What we have planned to spend in the first quarter was 1.99 billion, and what we actually spend was 1.681 uh, billion. That then meant that we have 309 million that was not spent for the first quarter, which is about 16% of what was planned to be spent. But when we then aggregate our spending um, in terms of our budget or in terms of our appropriated amount, we have spent 26% of our 6.5 billion. As you can see also under, um, under economic classification, when you look at how much we planned to spend for the, uh, for the, for just for the, for the first quarter, it was about 741 million for compensation of employees, but we spent only 707 million. For goods and services, we plan to spend 650 million, but we only spent 478 million. And, um, and when I move over to transfers and subsidies, we have planned to spend 514 million, but we spend 454 million. And lastly, it on capital expenditure, we, spend, we plan to spend 54 million, but we only spend 8.8 .8 million. Now in slide number two, uh, number 42, chairperson and members, uh, this is where we are explaining the variances in terms of how, why we, we couldn't spend the 16% that we have planned to spend. Now, in program one, as I indicated earlier on, what we have um, spent, it's only 268 million, and we have projected to spend 407 million. Now, the low spending is uh, or was um, attributable to the delay in the implementation of our management, uh, of our management strategy, which is the ICT strategy. Um, and also, which is also on the infrastructure uh, management strategy. The infrastructure strategy, the delay was, um, was attributable to the bid evaluation committee that was not available to sit and evaluate um, the bids that were provided in terms of us implementing the strategy. As for the ICT, it's because there was delayed in the delivery of equipment after we have already um, placed an order with the, with, the, with the service provider. Additional to that, there was also um, a matter around the ICT bandwidth that we couldn't make payment for, which uh, was as a result of the tax certificates that has expired uh, from the company, which then we had to wait for them to, to sort out their matters with the taxman before we can then um, a, a, a proceed with the, with the matter. Now in program two, what we have uh, spent there, it's 806 million uh, as compared to 887 million that was, spent, uh, that was planned to be spent. 
honorable chair and members, the, the low spending in that program was a result of the 17 mission accounts or missions that we could not um, interface into our reporting system, which is basic accounting system. These 17 missions could not be interfaced due to ICT um, uh, network problems that these missions experienced during this period, hence their expenditure was not reported in the in the in the in the month of um, in the month of June as a, as a result of that. So that is where we were with this program, which is program two. Now, um, which also uh, what also has what we have also experienced in this call in the, in this program too, the low spending was that um, we have as a department experienced the lower exchange rates. Uh, meaning that we have experienced a favorable exchange rate uh, during this quarter because our um, spending uh, vis a vis the exchange rates that we were given by National Treasury was lower. So, as a result, we have experienced a savings around that period. Then, for slide 43, we have a uh, program three where we have spent 108 million and we have projected to spend about 135 million. The low spending was then mainly attributable to expenditure for two missions account, which did not also um, close uh, during the time where they should have closed. Now, we, 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 we also, these two missions, the reason why they couldn't change, they, they couldn't close at a time they were supposed to close was as a result of them experiencing ICT network difficulties at the time when they had to close um, the accounts by end of June. And also including or adding to that, as I said in program two, we also experience um, a favorable exchange rate against the, 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 the planned exchange rate or against the budget exchange rate that was provided by National Treasury during this quarter. This as a result, it's because program two and program three are the programs where we have our missions abroad and they are spending in foreign currency. So should then um, the, the, the rent do better in terms of that, we then experience um, savings in that regard. Then in program four, we have spent 54.1 million of the projected expenditure of 73. This is where now, um, where Miss also Miss Lobe has um, um, alluded to, where we couldn't travel due to lockdown restriction and, and uh, that, that we have um, experienced as a department. So as for that, the spending for this program uh, went down because this is the program that supports um, uh, the president that supports our minister and then also that supports our minister and our deputy ministers when they travel abro abroad, which is public diplomacy as well as um, a, a, a state protocol. Now, program five, this is where we have spent um, according to our plans. We have spent 444 million of the projected 488. This 444 million, we have paid one, um, the African Union uh, membership fee. We have also paid the SADC membership fee, and we have also paid the ARF contribution, which is about 48 million. So this, the low spending that you, I mean, the, the variance that you see there, um, honorable chair and honorable members, was as a result of the favorable um, exchange rate as well, because our memberships are paid abroad, which means that they are paid in foreign currency. Then we have experienced um, a, a, a favorable um, um, exchange rate in that regard. As a result, there was a saving around the spending of um, this particular program. Uh, I will then move over a uh, honorable chair and honorable members to slide number 45, which then touches on quarter two on the departmental spending. Again, in um, slide number 45, our budget or our appropriation remained at 6.517 billion as a department. 
but what we have planned to spend in quarter two was 1.4 billion and what we actually spend at the end of quarter two was 1.2 billion with a variance of about 251 million. This is the amount that we couldn't spend as per our plans. And um, it, it, it then translates to 17% of our um, a projected amount of 1.485. However, when we look at the spending as a department as at end of September, we had spent 2.914 billion, which is 45% of our 6.5 billion of the budget. Then I will move over to slide number 46 to explain the variances that we all, the low spending that we have experienced in this quarter. Starting with program one, honorable chair and honorable members, um, the spending of 306 million um, from the projected expenditure of 389 million was as a result of uh, we continued to experience the delay in the implementation of property management um, strategy for the department, which is still um, as a result of the bid evaluation committee that um, has not been uh, sitting as planned. However, this problem has was escalated to the acting director general, and she has um, addressed the matter with the uh, uh, members of the bid evaluation committees. Secondly, um, the low spending that we experienced in this program was also around the delays in the delivery of ICT equipment, which we were still waiting for um, in, this, in this quarter. Now, the additional thing that we had in this quarter was about our bandwidth services that we, we couldn't pay due to the expired contracts where we were still sourcing um, appropriate um, approvals for us to pay even though the contract has expired. Then in program two, what we have spent for quarter two is 740 million of the projected expenditure of 872 million. Now, what we what has happened again in this particular uh, program and in this party in quarter two, we had about 15 mission accounts that did not close on time. And as a result, we could not then record their expenditure on our reporting system, which is the basic accounting system uh, that is um, uh, owned by National Treasury. So the 15 mission uh, that could not close on time in the quarter two were also experiencing the ICT um, network uh, problems, which then um, we managed to work with our ICT and our CIO, and we managed to resolve them, but that was only after the, the closure, which was 30 September, 2021. Again, the department for this quarter two, we managed to have a favorable exchange um, rate, which then also uh, contributed to the savings that you have seen um, in slide number 45. Then in slide number 46, um, this is where we are explaining program three, that from the spending of 114, which we projected 126 million, we couldn't spend the entire amount simply because we also expect the four missions, um, our four missions abroad experienced the ICT um, network uh, difficulties. As a result, they couldn't report their expenditure as they are supposed to uh, by end of September. So even for these four missions, after September, we managed to resolve the matter with our ICT with the assistance of the CIO. Now, program four, from the 67 million that we projected, only 76 million was spent. Again, the spending on this one was due to the less travel, uh, due to the lockdown restrictions, as much as it was open, the country or the, the world was opening up for traveling, but it was not opening up at a rate where we had projected to travel at. Hence now the spending in this program was lesser than what we have projected um, in, in quarter two. 
program five, um, the spending that we had there was only 2.9 million of the projected expenditure of 20.9 million. In this program, we had uh, planned to spend or we have planned to transfer money for Commonwealth, which was not paid um, during this particular quarter, which was based on the assessment that we have uh, projected before the end of um, September. However, the payment could only be released upon the receipts of the assessment letter for the current financial year, which was outstanding at a time in uh, uh, at the time, which was the 30th of September. As a result, this payment could not then be processed. It was only processed in the following months. Um, that is the spending in terms of our our appropriated budget, Honorable Chair. I will hand over to our acting DG. Thank you very much for the time, and um, that has been afforded to me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Bengu. Through you, Honorable Chair, I would now invite Madam Dineo Mashaku to present on ARF. Thank you, Madam Dineo. Um, good, after, good morning, Chairperson, uh, Deputy Minister, Honorable Members, Acting DG and colleagues. Um, uh, starting with the performance summary, as the uh, Deputy Minister has alluded, in the reporting period uh, in quarter two, um, we the ARF has uh, committed 288 million for the purchase of vaccines uh, for the African continent. And we have also committed 50 million to assist Cuba um, with food shortages that the country is um, currently experiencing. And uh, moving over to the performance summary, all the five targets uh, under the administration program uh, program have been achieved in both quarter one and quarter two. Um, the ARF Secretariat has continued to mon monitor active projects in collaborations with missions abroad to ensure that funds are, are utilized uh, for what they were intended for. We uh, did not have any project funding targets for quarter one. Uh, for quarter two, there were three targets um, of which one was achieved. Um, and the reasons for the non-achievement was uh, the SADC election of general missions were virtual uh, in both quarter one and two. And um, there was no request for uh, promoting democracy and good governance for funding. And uh, we, priorit we reprioritized all our funding to fund the two big humanitarian projects that were funded in quarter two. And uh, going to our financial report, as Ms. Bengu had alluded, uh, the appropriation for the ARF um, for the year is 48 million. And um, it was through a reprioritization of funding from previous projects that we were able to fund uh, the uh, vaccine project and the investment income that we had from our reserve bank account was 16 million. Um, and uh, what we had expensed uh, for local for uh, aid was 6.2 million. And um, we had a... a cash in the bank of 759 million. And uh, we have receivables, and the receivable that we have is on the loan that we've granted to Cuba. And uh, we are happy to report that Cuba has um, kept up, kept has repaid what was uh, meant to be repaid uh, on the loan. And we currently have commitments of 417 million. And where we are, where we were, as at the end of uh, quarter three, is that we at the, the end of quarter two we had available funding of 57 million thank you chairperson
Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, this comes to the end of our presentation to the honorable members. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Acting uh, GG, and the rest of the collective of the department that made the presentations. Uh, they were very much informative. Honorable members, here we are now. Yeah, we can engage unless the Deputy Minister there's something you may want to amplify uh, before the interactions. If there's none, we'll proceed. Honorable Deputy Minister. Okay, honorable members, there, there is the, the presentations. We can now engage. We have honorable Father, honorable Hendrix, followed by honorable Nkosi, Thank you, Chairperson. Can I go so long? And then uh, the, the last, oh, Honorable Msani. Good to see you, Honorable Msani. And the last hand is uh, Honorable Mpanza. And I just hope that uh, Honorable Members, there won't be delayed raising of, of, of hands. Um, Honorable Mbanza, Honorable Benis Swart. Honorable Benis Swart. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's the sequence then. Honorable Faba, over to you. Thank you, Chairperson. Yes, firstly, I want to say thank you for the department and also for Minister Buertes, Deputy Minister Buertes, with his introduction as well. And as well as obviously from you with your introduction from the start. Chairperson, um, I just want to first start off where it was said, or we were looking at the African Renaissance Fund. And it's increasing from 6.3 billion 2020 to 21 to 6.6 billion 23 24. Now, I know it's a quite a controversial issue because my opinion, and I had obviously um, previously since my NCOP is still now, issues on this African Renaissance funds that a lot of this money is actually used for Cuba. Now, I know some of our colleagues um, feel this is a very sensitive issue, and I may be as well. But my belief is still that the African Renaissance Fund should be thoroughly be used for Africa. Um, if there are funds um, to be used or borrowed to Cuba, um, then that should be through National Treasury in another way. I, I don't see why it has to go through this department, to be quite frank. I think it's not fair to Africa. I, I don't think we do justice to Africa in such a way. Um, then on the um, development and infrastructure projects on properties, as we know, we've got 127 state properties, 100 rented properties. Chairperson, we, we were busy last year at some stage where we were saying, but this should not be part of public works, looking after international properties overseas. To be quite frank, Public Works cannot even look at state-owned properties in South Africa. What about doing it overseas, which is a disgrace. So when I was looking at this on the development infrastructure um, projects, I, I want to just uh, get the information. This money that's being spent and plans to build new infrastructure in Angola, Indian, Botswana, etc. Will this now... Um, change from public works to 
international relations um, because we had the issue where the public works people says, said to us in the previous meeting, they've got the specialists. Now, now, surely I know they're using in the Kaja Park brawl. So obviously they have no specialists. Um, and this is why I believe maybe we should look at that, that international relations run not just the international relations, but that the missions and the international relations run their own um, property to see to it that it stays in good condition. Because obviously um, the interaction between those two is not working at all at this moment. This is why we almost went on oversight again to Namibia. Um, so, Chairperson, I'm, I'm going to leave there. Um, on the figures and stuff, I'll, I, I will look in later on as we go along towards the base, etc. But, but those are just some of my concerns I want to raise. I don't want to take too much time. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Faba. Honorable Hendricks. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, Honorable Chair, uh, we'd uh, uh, like to thank the department for the uh, presentation. Um, when it comes to bricks, we'd like to know why Durko is not serving on bricks and instead the uh, National Treasury. And the reason I raise that concern is because the mega projects uh, of bricks uh, in South Africa is leading to forced removals, uh, which was one of the uh, victories that we had uh, when we had our new dispensation. And for it to rear its head again, you know, is, is concerning. Uh, secondly, uh, we, uh, we noticed that in BRICS there's also uh, 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 an initiative to counter uh, terrorism. We want to know whether that includes undercover uh, cooperation, uh, sorry, undercover uh, uh, missions in South Africa by foreign uh, countries, because at the moment uh, that is happening and it came out in a high court trial that Britain and America and Friends of Israel, uh, you know, they, they have undercover operations in South Africa. Uh, we, uh, the smile of the president caused a lot of uh, uh, controversy when he accepted the, the letter of uh, uh, introduction by the Israeli ambassador. And uh, maybe uh, the protocol officers uh, of Darukol should advise the president, uh, you know, on, uh, on when, he, when, he, when he smiles. And I've never seen him smile uh, so generously uh, uh, before. Lastly, Honorable Chair, uh, we have a fund, and I want to know why uh, the fund is not being used uh, to support uh, uh, Western Sahara and, and Palestine with weapons to defend themselves. Thank you very much. Okay, Honorable Hendricks, we'll come back to the smile later. Honorable Ngozi. Thank you, Chairperson, and, and uh, thanks to the uh, department led by the Deputy Minister and uh, uh, his uh, uh, officials led by the TG, the TTG. Firstly, Chairperson, I think the, it's, a, it's just a, a, a minor complaint that the problem of the combination of performance reporting of quarter one and two makes the, the, the reporting very bulky and not specific to particular quarters. And therefore, we're not able to track if, let's say, if in terms of uh, targets, whether a target related to a particular quarter has been achieved uh as compared to com uh, combining uh, the two quarters so as we said in the past it is important to report per quarter um, and i think that that we should do the the second thing relating to that is that we had agreed that there will be two meetings uh, on reporting by the department the first meeting or in whatever order will concentrate on the department and the second meeting would concentrate, concentrate on the African Renaissance Fund. And I think we should re revert to that because it gives us an opportunity 
to, to, to focus. I just want to raise uh, the following issues on the performance uh, reporting chair that a lot of issues relate to political engagement with countries, political engagement with countries, and then there are specific issues that are raised. I'm not going to pick on any specific one, but just to highlight that it is important that what is reported is not the engagements, but what is reported should be the results of the engagement. So if we say, for example, uh, addressing the situation in Mozambique, I'm taking an example, or Mozambique and, and Lesotho. On Mozambique, we want to know um, what are the specific things that have been done to contain the situation in Northern Mozambique? Are there specific actions that have been undertaken by the department or jointly by the department and other departments in the country for the deployment of political interventions, military interventions? What is the progress? Are we seeing a peace settling? What are the risks faced by ourselves as a region, but in particular, uh, South Africa? So it, it's not helpful really to say, we've engaged, we've engaged, et cetera. I'll, I'll also make an example with Lesotho. How far are we? We know uh, from public knowledge uh, that Lesotho has engaged on national dialogue on the constitution and uh, reforms, and they are about to adopt a new constitution. But it's not helpful to just say that we've engaged with them, we've engaged with them, we've got somebody who's there uh, and facilitating. And it goes for all these uh, political engagements. If I pick one, for example, with uh, both Europe and, and uh, Europe, Americas, and the Africa region, on um, economic engagements for, or, or economic policy, there are a whole lot of issues that have been outlined on infrastructure, on uh, IT, ICT, on the ocean economy, et cetera, et cetera. But what are the concrete things that have, have resulted from those engagements? And that leads me to chair the, the whether uh, the department, after facilitating these uh, interactions, has the capability and the expertise to monitor their implementation or whether these reside with line departments responsible for these various responsibilities. I've listed, for example, most of the issues relate to uh, DTI, most other issues relate to agriculture, other issues relate to the Department of Tourism, so that the specific uh, uh, follow through programs or investments uh, fall within those line departments and uh, we should be able to, not only to track our meetings and engagement on those things, but whether these have translated into concrete uh, programs. Uh, chair, that goes with uh, to all the issues on on, on engagement, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Take for example the province to province. Is is Limpopo just an accidental thing, or was it driven by us as a department? And what of Limpopo in relation to all other nine? I mean eight. Uh, uh, provinces? What is the progress in those? Are the initiatives in, in those uh, uh, outstanding provinces, eight of them? And, and, and how far are we? Chair, so I, I move from that to just to indicate, Chair, that, for example, um, on, on engagements at an international level, it is indicated that there are a lot, a lot of international meetings that took place uh, in the reporting period. But again, these this, uh, engagements and, and, and meetings, uh, my reading is that they are largely health department related or social development, except for one where there is a G20 meeting of uh, foreign relations uh, 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 ministers. Uh, 
So even in that regard, are these meetings and their content and their focus determined by the department or are they residing with the line and, and implementing departments, uh, for example, uh, the summit on health and whatever? Uh, it, I would assume it is the Department of Health that leads and we're playing a supportive role as the as DECO. There are, there are several things, Chairperson, that uh, needs uh, re-emphasis. The issue of SATPA and the non-achievement on this issue, I think we've had this issue for the past two financial year or so, and it is concerning that we are not making any progress in this regard. And the explanation, uh, while adequate, doesn't answer the fundamental question on what are the act actual processes to establish SADPA. We can't just say we, can't, we couldn't establish it, et cetera, et cetera. And this relates also to the point I think Honorable Faber wants to raise uh, with regards to the Foreign Services Act. And Chair, on the ICT delays or capital expenditure delays, my, my question is, if we are not able to deliver laptops and, and, and tools of trade because of uh, prior issues that are supposed to be settled, we, licenses have expired, we have not renewed them, we are unable to, to pay, or the bid adjudication committee is not available, what is the impact? of uh, this on deliverables in that period? Uh, and, and, and what specific actions have been taken to remedy the situation? Because it's, it's helpful to say we've not been able to, 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 to achieve because we didn't have capital expenditure on these issues. But it's quite another thing to determine what the impact of this is on deliverables. For example, you say, on, on ICT, uh, the, adjud the bid adjudication committee was not available. Don't work according to timelines and as far as SCM is concerned and deliver, deliver on particular timelines uh, before uh, these matters become raised as reportable matters by the AG. So I uh, also, in, in that regard, just want to get clarity on this interface between bars and the, the, the 17 missions. You know, if this is a once-off issue, it's not a problem. Uh, but if it's, some, it's something that is going to repeat itself throughout the financial year, then it will be a reportable matter by the the in uh, the AG uh, chairperson. I think these are my are my initial comments, and um, I will just revert to my introductory remarks that it may be helpful to separate the quarter reportings per quarter itself, so that we are able to track, but also to separate the ECO and uh, ARF. Thank you, chair. Thank you very much, Chairperson, and thank you for the report. Um, mine, Chairperson, goes to what we witnessed last week where the President was getting the credentials of the Israel Ambassador in South Africa. Um, I think as South Africa, and especially as this committee, we need to take a stance. Um, we cannot want to have our cake and eat it. Because if even if you look at the communication on uh, by Durko, uh, by, by Durko um, there no, had no. to be an explanation. Yeah, that was, so, sorry, Honorable Musani. That then goes the You can proceed on There had to be an explanation by Durko uh, to the public on why is um, 
the Israel ambassador being uh, welcome to South Africa. Um, Chairperson, there has been many calls for the embassy of Israel to be shut down in South Africa. And for the minister, Dr. Naledi Pando, to be saying that, yes, we stand in solidarity with um, the Palestine, you know, all calls we even had to prevent, um, we, we pulled out our support from Miss South Africa from attending the Miss Universe as a country. So I think it's very, it's, it's being hypocrites to a certain point as a country where we cannot make a solid decision. Sometimes we need to, to decide because other countries decided for South Africa when we were facing apartheid. They made a decision to say that let us shut out South Africa, whether they have anything to give us or not. But because of what they are doing to their people, let us shut it out until we find democracy in South Africa. And we are not doing that as a country. Similar to that of Eswatini. People of Eswatini are suffering because they are being killed by their own king. But South Africa is not taking a firm stance or showing any form of advocating for democracy in, in Eswatini. There's a report that came out yesterday um, and it speaks of the, the, the suffering and the apartheid, how Israel is, is not only um, suffocating their people or the people of Palestine, but it's also suffocating the people in Israel, you know, to show that it, it is an apartheid state. And as a government who came in at a critical time where we got support from other countries in the world to say that, we are shutting out South Africa. Let us put pressure until South Africans are free from apartheid. So for us to say, yes, Israel, we do business with Israel, Israel this and Israel is beneficial to South Africa, so we can't completely, we need to make a stand, uh, Chairperson. And, and really, we cannot be seeing Israel enjoying benefits as if we don't acknowledge the suffering of, of, of the people in Israel and the people of Palestine. We need to be decisive on the matter. And then Chairperson, I just want to check on, on the issue of the elections that were meant to happen in Libya. What could have caused those delays? And South Africa has been part of the negotiation team and trying to bring about peace in Libya. What interventions have we done? And when uh, are we expecting to see any change with regards to these elections. And then um, I didn't see anything on the e e intervention on the uh, insurgencies that are happening in West Africa. You know, this thing dates back from the first country that got its independence. West Africa has always been faced with insurgencies. So what are we advocating as South Africa in the bodies such as the AU, um, because sanctions might not last long, although we might think they are helpful, but how do we look at finding a permanent re uh, solution? Because it cannot be that all the time um, the people of West Africa have to have instability with the latest being in, in Burkina Faso. Um, what is South Africa's stance, uh, Chairperson, regarding this Russia and Ukraine conflict? Because we all know when the elephants fight, the grass suffers. And I would strongly like to believe that um, the involvement of the United States in this matter is, is, is them fighting their own wars and painting a public picture to the world that the, the Russians are actually the ones that are, 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 are making the Ukrainians um, to, to, to suffer. So what is our stance as South Africans? And then Chairperson, you know, it's, it's, it's very cowardice for Department of International Relations and Cooperation to be silent actually dead silent when 
our role and responsibility is to build relations and make sure that, you know, we, we belong to a number of bodies um, that look after migrants. It's, it's our role and responsibility to look after migrants. It's our role and responsibility to integrate migrants into this country as a host. But when there's a, 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 a when the white monopoly capital stirs uh, problems like a black on black violence and our department keeps quiet but comes here to report that we've had a, a meeting with the embassy of uh, Nigeria, we've had a meeting with the embassy of Congo, but, but there are people are suffering in our country and as a department that is in charge of that, we are silent. And I've, I've you know, as a, as, a, as a member of parliament, Shepardson, I might think that I am a, 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 an individual as Utembimsane at some point and, you are not. So that equally goes to when we spoke to, I'll make an example, when we spoke to the acting DG to say that you cannot go on a public platform like uh, uh, social media, Facebook, and speak of things. You, you can never pull away from your position of responsibility because when people see you, they see a acting DG, they see an MP. So they, 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 there's quite um, a disturbing thing that is happening on social media regarding our 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 our, our, our officials, Chairperson, where an official who is an acting DG um, or a DG or goes to a space right on Twitter and participates. Um, participates on, 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 on a space which is very xenophobic, number one, a space which is very divisive on the African people. And you see them clapping hands and, 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 and this person, it, it, it just, it's very shocking. And it just adds to that fact that yes, the department has not issued a statement. So who are we actually working with? Are we working with people that are promoting this division within the African people that are in South Africa? Or are we working with people that want to build relations and make the public understand what does it mean to be a migrant in South Africa? What are the conditions they are facing? How do we build relations with such people instead of promoting white monopoly capital division on the African people, Chairperson? I found it very disturbing. And I think our, our, our officials need to look and really look at how they participate and handle themselves in public in issues that are, 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 are based on their department and what needs to be done. Because let's be honest, Chairperson, this white monopoly capital division that is happening on African people, if it was dealt with decisively by the Department of International Relations and Corporations, we wouldn't be where we are. Because there are white paper, green papers that were dropped by the previous ministers of home affairs, Minister um, Malusi Kigaba, they, 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 that explains that, you know, pre-apartheid, the, the, the white people were allowed to, to come so to South Africa, even as migrants in, in large numbers. And all of a sudden, when Africans are facing a crisis in their own countries, we as South Africans, we cannot accept it, but there was never an uprising when the people, the white farmers of Zimbabwe came in large numbers in South Africa. There was never that division and, and fighting for employment and all those things. So department needs to raise its voice. Department, the Department of International Relations must take up its position and, and clarify, clarify what is the role of the department with regard to these matters. And then, Chairperson, can we get an update, please, regarding the African Continental Free Trade Agreement? Maybe another session with uh, the Department of Trade and Industry. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Masali. Just to remind Honorable Members that uh, uh, the matter relating to the social media 
expressions that were done by the ATG. It's a matter that we have agreed to discuss with the minister face to face when we meet in a date that has now been secured with the minister. So uh, maybe we must just wait on other matters relating to this matter for that particular date. Honorable Swartz. Honorable Swartz. Good afternoon, Honorable Chair, and good afternoon, Honorable Waters and the DDG and his team. Chair, um, hey, Gunzi Malaga, Terkula Pachi, Maskuve, Chair, Nifagi, input, yam. Um, thank you for the presentation on the first and second quarter's reporting. But uh, I would like to express my disappointment with the poor quality of reporting. In the main, my observation is that you chose to report on events rather than against indicators and targets. When it comes to the finances, it is more to do with the excuses for low spending, citing the known reasons such as ICT, COVID-19, and the recycling of previous reasons for non-performance. What we do not hear is how have you achieved or not achieved against your planned targets, as well as the reasons thereof or interventions to overcome under achievement where applicable. That really makes our oversight very difficult. In program, two and three, you seem to have been reporting on events and meetings, discussions, without showing the actual department's outputs and outcomes. The question is what did South Africa benefit from the structured bilateral mechanisms and high level visits during the period under review? What were the tangible results from the regional investment strategies? And to what extent did this contribute to our local and regional economic growth? In program one, you tried to report on achievement, but going through them one wonders how some of the achievements are reflected. For example, some way you report about one of the digital strategy but only moder modernizing and automating without being specific as to the tangible. What evidence is available to be shared with the community? How far was the department on the procurement of ICT equipment, if no then Marul Benis, are you in motion? We can't hear you. The the network is not good at all. Being modernized don't you assume that the low spend or execution to maybe i don't know up until where you heard me but oh, i said oh. in program one honorable Dennis. i can hear you chair yeah we lost you a little bit a few seconds back so okay. maybe if you can yes if, if you can go back to where you you ended by saying what was south africa's benefit in okay. some of the relations that, yeah. And, and let's start it from okay. there. The question is, what did South Africa Yo, 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 yo. 
Sorry, Chair. Yes. Can I make a recommendation that she types it on the chat? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sure that that can also assist. Honorable Benis, if you can hear me, it might be better for you to send the questions through the chat so that they can then be able to process them. Your network, unfortunately, is not your making. Your network is not good. The last okay. speaker will be Honorable Mpanza. No, thanks uh, very much, Chair. I hope uh, my network <clears throat> is not going to fail me as well. Uh, Chair, let me start by uh, aligning myself and commending your opening remarks, which I think uh, the department must uh, take into consideration when they are responding and also uh, dealing with this whole issue of um, its performance uh, uh, targets. Because I found I found the, those remarks very much uh, uh, <clears throat> progressive and very helpful uh, in this discussion, and also the input that was also made by the deputy uh, minister, honourable uh, Bortes. I think that was also very much uh, important, and in fact, I have uh, <clears throat> observed synergy between your opening remarks, uh, com, uh, Honorable Chair, and with Deputy Minister uh, Porter's uh, input. So I think uh, one would want to align uh, himself uh, with those two uh, contributions that have been made by, made by yourselves uh, and the Deputy Minister respectively. Chair, I also want to raise a, an issue uh, of, of a process going forward uh, in line with what uh, Honorable and Gossi <clears throat> has raised, that uh, we must ask the department that going forward, let's follow uh, that suggestion <clears throat> of separating uh, the quotas and also separating the African Renaissance. Because why, Chair, I'm raising that issue. Uh, this has been uh, happening <clears throat> uh, for quite some time now when we are dealing with the matters of uh, uh, performance of the department that we won't deal with one uh, quota or a particular quota. We'll deal with the the the, the 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 current quarter but uh, with the previous so it means that there is an issue of a backlog uh, that <clears throat> needs to be addressed we can't all the time uh, deal with this matter uh, deal with the current installment and then also deal with the the previous installments because they were not dealt with uh, during the the time where uh, they were supposed to be dealt with now, because it then uh, makes the engagement between us and the department not to be leveled. They take bulk of uh, the airtime of, 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 of the committee meeting. And then when we come in, uh, there's little airtime that is left for us. So now then it then uh, <clears throat> suffocate uh, our our input because we, then there is when they respond, then sometimes they provoke uh, follow up questions, and then the time uh, is, is 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 not 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 available. So I would really want to say that we we should be heading to a situation where this issue of the backlog. Uh, in terms of the quotas, uh, the department must now try 
by all means to to address it. The chair, the other thing I had the presenters saying that uh, the, there is much improvement now in the manner in which they are they've structured their presentation, and uh, also in terms of uh, how they've structured. Uh, the performance and the key performance areas and the, and the indicators and all those things. Now, I want to, to find out, uh, because I think there is a template or a format that I think all the departments they follow, uh, which I think was also developed in consultation with the, with the departments and the and, and treasurer. That uh, what what if they can just uh, unpack what 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 is this uh, improved uh, way that they are talking about? Because as far as I'm concerned, uh, I don't see any improvement. I think this thing uh, are done in terms of uh, the smart principle uh, uh, pr uh, uh, for format, uh, which. Is a standard uh, format for all the departments when they are presenting uh, this kind of of of, 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 of uh, uh, presentation. Chair, uh, I just want also to raise the issue. My observation is that uh, there is uh, quite a lot, and it's quite uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, improvement in the. When it, you, they deal with other programs that are political in nature, uh, we haven't uh, have had some 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 issues a lot to raise there. But I I think uh, program number one, which is administration, uh, there still have to be much uh, improvement there, and it's the one that has always created quite a number of uh, problems uh, uh, in the department. Uh, and even when the AG was uh, dealing with uh, auditing the department, a lot of audit queries and the, the recurring audit queries, they are coming from that program. Because it's a, it's a very important program because uh, it deals with uh, the, the 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 breathing. It's like the engine of the department. Uh, <clears throat> the 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 is the heart of the of the of of the department. And and I think uh, next time when we follow what uh, Honorable Ngozi has suggested, and we're dealing with. Uh, this uh, separated from the African Renaissance, we'll have enough time uh, to engage uh, on that. Uh, like, you know, even the issue of the ICT, we have raised it many, many times, and uh, other honorable members have raised it. Uh, there seems to be challenges with the issue of supply chain and the committee is not there and all those things. So the issue that Honorable Nkos was raising of uh, what they are operating on, they, they don't have timelines. But also, in terms of the smart principles uh, guidelines, I, I see some errors. I'm not going to be able to pinpoint now where the department is still. Yes, I think there is an improvement, but it's where the department is still uh, put things uh, one. Uh, that are unfunded mandates. Uh, you can't spend what you don't have. That's a principle. But they are also putting things that they don't have control over. Now, which we have always advised and say, when they develop these targets, key performance areas and targets, uh, in line with the smart principle, they must then make sure that <clears throat> they avoid uh, including things that are not uh, funded and things that are, are also not uh, within their, 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 their control. 
but also to pick up from uh, Honorable uh, Swart. As much as uh, we always uh, say uh, over expenditure, uh, it's, uh, it's a punishable thing and uh, <clears throat> it's not acceptable. And it can even uh, uh, make us to, to call for consequence management. I think equally so with, with uh, the backlogs that we have uh, here in South Africa, uh, it's quite not acceptable uh, to underspend. And uh, it should not be something that is celebrated that no, we did not uh, spend the savings and all those things. That's not what we want to see as a committee. When there are funds, they must be spent because there's quite a lot of, uh, 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 we, of course, we are not a service delivery uh, department, but there are service delivery issues uh, indirectly. Uh, that are addressed when the monies are spent, even in 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 issues that are not directly uh, uh, measurable in terms of service delivery. So 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 I think uh, the department must also improve on 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 on, on that one. Chair, towards my conclusion, um, of course, uh, let me thank. Uh, our 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 researcher, you made a suggestion, uh, Chair, long time ago in our committee, that we must always, as a committee, get daily updates uh, on international uh, developments. And uh, I want to thank. It's 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 a it's a very very demanding task, and I was wondering how was he going to cope with doing that. Uh, on daily basis, but to my surprise, he has never failed. Uh, he's always providing us with with those uh, uh, international overviews, and it helps us. And I I would encourage uh, members of uh, the committee uh, to read these things because uh, it keeps us uh, informed on daily basis as to what are the developments uh, international in Africa in other continents. Uh, of, of 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 the world, and I, I think we must give credit where credit is due, and and then commend uh, <clears throat> Mr. Matlala uh, for doing that because you suggested and it's very I found it very much uh, helpful and very informative, it's empowering to us because we cannot know everything unless someone assists you with that kind of information. But Chair, also the issues that have been raised uh, by uh, Honorable Msani, some of them might not be falling exactly on this matter of performance uh, uh, assessment of the department uh, directly. Uh, but they are, they, they are very critical issues. They are political in nature, and they deal with uh, international relations in terms of uh, what is happening. Uh, uh, globally, and in terms of the issues of the balance of forces, uh, ideologically, uh, socially, politically, and otherwise. So then I think because we are a multi-ideological uh, uh, committee, uh, <clears throat> we might not agree on other issues uh, ideologically, but I think we are guided by the government policy, uh, which uh, are adopted by all of us, whether they are coming from the ruling party or the opposition, but once they are agreed upon uh, at a government level, then they become our 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 our, our foreign policy, uh, and now that we have also the Foreign Services Act. And I think we must also utilize that legislation. Hence, in other discussions, we've been calling for the implementation uh, of that act. 
and, and getting a, a schedule uh, as to what is the department doing in making sure that it's implemented. So I would suggest uh, that maybe in your committee then maybe we have a session uh, to discuss those kind of issues, like the one he was raising about the issue of Israel and the president accepting the credentials, uh, which I don't know it would be advisable to engage on it now, uh, or maybe we can maybe <clears throat> uh, just say something, but also there is that meeting that you talked about, Chair, that is still outstanding between the committee, the physical meeting with the minister, uh, which will also deal with the issues of social media and all those things. Maybe we can also engage on those kind of issues in, in that meeting. But that one was specific to deal with particular issue. But maybe as a program of the committee, one of the meetings maybe could be just be set aside uh, for us to engage uh, on those on the, on those issues, so that as a committee we'll be on the same wavelength as to how do we deal with those the nature the, the, the those, those 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 issues the, uh, the, the the nature of those kind of, of, of issues. So, except to say, Chair, on the issue of uh, the president and the issue of Israel, I think I would suggest that because the department has uh, issued a statement, a media statement to that effect, maybe that as a committee, we because even the, uh, the minister is not here, I don't know whether the uh, deputy minister will be in a position maybe to give clarity on that matter now. Uh, I would leave that uh, in your capable hands as a chairperson, but my input on that one would be to say there is a, a statement uh, that was issued by the department uh, media one that as a committee maybe for now, we should then align ourselves with that media statement. Uh, and then uh, if, members feel that we want to add something we can add something and then uh, at the end of the day then whatever we agreed upon uh, together with that statement then uh, we then make it a media statement of the portfolio committee uh, so that not to be seen to be uh, quiet on the issue uh, as if we don't have a view uh, as, uh, in the committee. And yes, of course, guided by uh, the government police, because I think that statement, media statement is guided by legislation, is guided by uh, our South African uh, foreign policy. And uh, I, when I read it, I think uh, it was a statement that was actually responding on a matter uh, relatively okay, but maybe it might not be satisfactory 100%. So, Chair, that would be my uh, input, and thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thanks, Honorable Mpansa. Honorable Darfman, I'll give you an opportunity to speak, but please, in future, when we take hands, raise your hand on time. Over to Honorable Darfman. Chair, thank you very much. I really appreciate that, and I really do apologize. <laughs> Um, just the spirit in which this uh, meeting is going. The, we were discussing the third quarter report, and I was hoping that we would engage around the actual report in terms of what was actually happening with Indurco and trying to work with Indurco and trying to uh, rebuild Durko, um considering that we come from an era where Turco is very much broken. And, um, you know, we've got ambassadors that are dictating to us when they're going to leave their posts and when they're going to take up other posts. Um, you know, the, the ambassador in Kazakhstan, for example. Um, for us, it's a rather case of, I would have liked the presenters to talk about the real issues that are tampering uh, Durko, we've got the, legal, the legalization department that's at the moment delaying 
uh, got six weeks delays at least where before people could walk in and get their documents legalized right there and then these these things have an effect on people taking up jobs people splitting up their families uh, people having to pay for courier services you know these are the things that are out of sight out of mind and it's our job as as legislators and oversight people to to make sure that this is the stuff that gets discussed in a in an in an oversight report so that this is what we could actually fix and i'm hoping that you know when it comes to international relations that we focus more on our continents and we focus more on the stuff that is hurting our people and the stuff that uh, is is right on our borders that has the potential to actually kill maim and injure our own brothers and sisters in our borders and we talk about eswatini we haven't had a we haven't had a, any meeting uh, we haven't called any urgent meeting to discuss what's taking place with eswatini um there's some political parties in south africa that are involved with that yet uh, the people dying daily the people that are being uh, there's mps that are in hiding because of what's taking place in eswatini and yet we focus on something outside of south Af outside of africa we got mozambique that the terror that is unleashed in mozambique could easily jump into south africa but we don't worry about that we worried more about the we worried more about the middle east so what it translates to and please hear me out on this because i'm going to be very clear what it translates to is that when we go to conferences like the SADC conferences the au conferences people laugh at us it's not just the opposition parties that laugh at us at these conferences from malawi from uh, zimbabwe from rwanda people actually laugh at us from the ruling parties they say to us why doesn't south africa and algeria go live in the middle east why don't they want to go join the middle east because they're obsessed with the middle east that's the tone they take with us that's why we don't get elected into positions in the au because people say that we're not a serious country we're a country that just worries about interfering in in the middle east we never worry about africa and africa's problems and that's what they talk about when they talk about when we sit in sadic and, and rwanda and zimbabwe have to fix our problems or when we sit in au and the drc has to fix our problems so we've got a direct threat taking place in the drc right now and it's going to take south africa to fix in the east and i know that we are already going to the boundaries and the borders but these are the situations that we as a committee need to worry ourselves with and we need to discuss now that's not to say that palestine and israel is not a problem and it's not to say that we don't want peace in the middle east of course we do and any death and any injury in the middle east is one too many and i can name many countries where that is happening daily i can name syria i can name jordan i can name uh, lebanon there's deaths taking place all the time and that's a death too many if you care about life you care about human rights you're going to defend human rights and life wherever you are the problem with our country is that we talk about things that we don't know about and we talk about things that we are actually just by our arguments we give ourselves away arguments talk about israel itself as a country now i'm not a defender of israel i'm a defender of peace i want palestine and israel to be in a state of peace i want them to trade with each other and i want both my brothers in palestine and my brothers in israel to be able to live in harmony and uh, in a state of peace forever but in israel there are arabs and there are jews that live together that's not that's not there's that's not argued it's truth that's fact there are arab judges there are arab politicians there are arab policemen they can own land they can own houses they can vote they it was an arab judge that puts a jewish president into jail so we talk about the apartheid in israel it's not true 
What we need to do is when you hear some of our politicians talking, I cringe because they don't know the facts. There's a Palestine and there's a Gaza. There's a Palestinian Authority in, in the West Bank and then there's, there, there's Gaza. Those, of course, are dangerous. Uh, you know, that's, that's where we talk about some apartheid taking place because of the authorities looking after the certain areas. And then we talk about settlements where the Israelis are wrongfully building settlements in areas that there should be no building of settlements. Chair, what we need to do, if we're so, so serious about the Middle East and we don't care about Africa, we need to go on an oversight trip and we need to see for ourselves we need to go into Palestine, we need to go into Gaza, and we need to go into Israel, and we need to see what's happening for ourselves. We can't take what happens in a magazine as the gospel, or we can't take what happens um, at a protest march as the gospel. There's people that either care about peace, or there are people that will always care about maiming, killing, and, and, and ensuring that there's war. I'm on the side of peace. I'm on the one that, that has a vision that one day there'll be a Palestine of peace and an Israel of peace, and they'll live harmoniously together side by side with no more killing. We as South Africa, though, we're on the cusp of a violent Eswatini. We're on the cusp of a violent Mozambique that won't just kill Mozambicans. It won't just kill uh, faithful, loyal citizens of Eswatini but it will spill over into South Africa. And we as South Africans, we owe it to our brothers, not just in Africa, but in SADC. We've got the DRC. We've got uh, other areas where we need to be defenders. We need to be true peacekeepers. We need to stand up and take it seriously that these are things that we need to worry about. So my colleague before me spoke about a daily briefing that he gets i've never received a daily briefing so i'm not sure if it's on my another email address or i'm not sure if it's on a whatsapp group that i'm not on but i'd love to get that daily briefing but more importantly these meetings we should have briefings about eswatini we should be having and we should call the we should be calling in the ambassadors we should have meetings about the drc we should have meetings about Mozambique, and we should be calling in the right ambassadors. Um, my colleague from Al Jama has made a claim that America and uh, I think he said Israel or friends of Israel, they've got operations that are taking place in South Africa right now. These are serious claims. You know, these are some things that must be dealt with. We must understand what's going on in South Africa. Is, is South Africa a hotspot for for people to come use South Africa as a playground for terrorism or anti-terrorism, we must understand what's going on. So it is time that South Africa and Durko, with the help of Durko, stabilizes its international image by being serious to, I, you know, if we're gonna close our embassy in Israel, that's, that's neither here nor there. You know, if it, the protest, it has to be about peace, but, what I do want and what I do care about is the economy. If we're going to close off trade, it's not Israel's trades that, that is affected. Israel, Israel's going to trade with anyone else. They've made enough peace pacts with the Arab and Muslim countries in the, in the Middle East in the last two years. They're going to, their trade's fine. It's the South African trade that I'm worried about. It's the South African jobs that I'm worried about. It's the South African economy that I'm worried about because we can't afford to lose more jobs. That's where I care about. So we must just be careful that if we're gonna cut our nose to spite our face, that we just make sure that we've got a backup plan. As it is, I believe that we don't oversight enough. We don't inform ourselves enough. And Chair, this is a heartfelt plea to you. I've really enjoyed the way that you've been chairing these meetings as opposed to the last uh, way our meetings were chaired. Let's do the oversight. Let's call in the ambassadors. Let's ask the tough questions. I'm not on anyone's side. I can make that clear today. I, I've been in Ramallah. I've been in uh, Jerusalem. I'm on the side of peace. I'm on the side of justice. That's my side. But let's call the right people in and let's interrogate. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, uh, 
Bergman, uh, excluding the compliment. We now have, before we go to the responses, we now Chair. have uh, Chair. from from Honorable Honorable Benny Swartz, uh, what Chair. he was uh, presenting. Somebody saying Chair, Chair, Chair. Was that was the issue? Yes. No, Chair. Uh, it's Honorable Mbanza. My apologies. I've, I've raised yes, my hand. Mbanza. Yes, Chair. No, Chair. Uh, <clears throat> I, I, I don't think it will be correct uh, to not correct a lot of misrepresentation uh, that has been uh, made by the latter speaker. Uh, in fact, Chair, I know this meeting, we, we treat each other with respect, so I didn't want to raise a point of order. But I should you have know, done. Can I suggest that? Uh... Can I suggest, Honorable Mbanza, and please don't forget what you, you were going to say. As soon as the department is done, I'll give you an opportunity to come back to this matter. Hey, Chair, I, I don't know. I will respect you, but uh, I, I think uh, <clears throat> I, 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 I thought that it will be proper to raise it while it's still, so that when it's it still hot. It, yeah. <laughs> okay, proceed then. But you must know he's going to want to respond to what you are saying, but proceed. Yeah, no, thanks very much. No, no, no. I just wanted to say uh, maybe Honorable uh, Bergman had a problem maybe with uh, the network because you remember you raised the issue of uh, people raising their hands and even saying uh, people, uh, they must not come back and then raise uh, the hands. but. He came back and then you allowed him, which was, I think it was fine. Uh, there was no problem. But now, Chair, sometimes when you have not been in the meeting, uh, you don't uh, hear other things that have been said before you you, were, you, you, you came in. Now, he is uh, saying that uh, we have uh, preoccupied ourselves about the Middle East uh, and then that's what I want to correct, Chair, because when we discussed this whole issue, and I remember he came when I was just dealing with the matter that was raised by Honorable Msani on the issue of Israel. But Honorable Msani has raised issues. He, he, isn't, he, he had even asked us to get an update on what is happening in Swaziland, in, the, in, in, in Mozambique. So we've covered all those issues, uh, SADC, South Africa, Middle East. Uh, so I wanted to correct that, Chair, uh, because if it's, it's left not corrected, uh, it was uh, going to. And another thing, Chair, when we, we talk, we, I know we might be feeling very strong about other issues, but we might not engage in a manner that insults the intelligence of other honorable members. Uh, to say, uh, honorable members, they talk about things that they don't know about it, uh, things they read on the magazine. It's, it's a problem, Chair, because every time, uh, maybe you must know this, every time when you discuss the issue, once you deal with the issue of Israel and Palestine, then uh, honorable uh, Bergman's uh, conduct uh, it becomes very, very, very... Uh, unacceptable, Chair. Uh, on other issues could be fine, but once you, you raise that issue, I know that maybe he might be feeling very strong about it in his own way, but we should not be suppressed uh, to express our views and then uh, be insulted, you know, uh, our intelligence. No, Chair, that, that should not be allowed. So that's what I wanted to raise so that going forward, uh, we avoid this thing. Thanks very much, Chair. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Honorable Mbanza. I thought that, uh, and I think that's what the department should do in the responses. It's is to in detail, concretely, factually indicate the global focus of the department. Um, 
in, in, in how they do their work uh, and so on. And that would have taken care of uh, an assertion made by Honorable Black Man that there's no much more focus on the African continent. But I don't want to talk for the department. That's why I thought Honorable Banza, maybe we must give them a chance uh, to respond. But be that as it may, let, let's go to Honorable Swartz. Uh, she says that, uh, remember, she couldn't, she, she couldn't complete the question. So she says, what were the tangible results from the regional investment strategies? And to what extent does this contribute to the local and regional economic growth? And then she goes on to say, in program one, you tried to report on the achievements, but going through them, I wonder how some of the achievements are reflected. For example, somewhere you report about progress report on the implementation of the digital strategy, but only modernizing and automizing without being specific as to the tangible what evidence is available to be shared with the committee? The next one is, how far was the department on the procurement of ICT equipment? If no, program, if no progress then, what was modernized and being automated? And the last one she says, would we be wrong if we assume that the low spending you are referring to in your reports has come more to do with poor planning and execution than anything else, please convince us otherwise. Yeah, so she delegated me to, to complete those questions because she had network problems. From my side, it's just a, a few issues, there are not many. One, I think it will be helpful in future going forward to not just make a general statement that says a certain number of missions uh, could not report as a consequence of either IT pro problems or, or whatever. It will, be, it will be important in my view uh, to say specific missions which encounter to that particular uh, problem for the sake of transparency and fullness of the picture. Uh, the second issue is on, uh, I think it will relate to program one. Any institution in government has to deal with consequence management. And when you deal with consequence management, there are many intricacies that are involved and that will include uh, legal challenges, appointment of consultants, and so on and so forth. It will be helpful if we can indicate in the report going forward the extent to which the need for us to do consequence management may have had implications on our budget. I'll make an example. When I arrived here as the chairperson, the new chairperson, I came across uh, two issues, the New York land issue and Qatar matter. It will be useful to say on dealing with this consequent management issues in the process because of delays caused by this and that and that and that, this also implicated um, somehow on our, on our budget and on some of the targets that we have set uh, for ourselves. So it will be better in future to also reflect on that. Now, there's a matter that as long as I'm in this committee, I'm continue to, I will continue to raise. I know that it may have not been the manner in which the department has been reporting. One day, South Africa, one day, I don't know where, but one day, South Africa will be a non-racial country. So we'll no longer be looking at, at issues from the lens of uh, racial classification. We are not there yet, we are getting there. 
And one day again, we will be a non-sexist country. We will not be using the lens of uh, discrimination of people based on gender and so on. The reason why we are dealing with those two political economic dramas is because of our history of colonialism, of apartheid. Future generations must inherit a fully non-racial, non-sexist South Africa from us. Now, I, I'm going to request that. I know it's a, it's a bit of a cumbersome exercise, but we'll have to do it. This uh, international trade uh, deals, agreements, and so on that we report about here, it will be important to say, as part of building a non-sexist South Africa, this is the extent to which quantitatively and qualitatively, women have been affirmed as part of building a non-sexist South Africa. The same must apply to building a non-racial South Africa. We should be able to say in racial terms, the trade agreements, this is how they have uh, impacted on our cause to build a non-racial South Africa so that we can be able to see whether we are making progress or not. Because if we don't, colleagues and comrades and honorable members, we will not be able to measure whether indeed we are compliant with what the Constitution's preamble says, that we must deal with the injustices of our past. So it can't just be a broad political statement. Department has to quantify the extent to which we are making progress there, because if we are not careful, we may be over-celebrating status quoism where racial imbalances are expressed through the economy. And we are simply looking at percentages in return terms to South Africa, in as far as these uh, global investments are concerned. Later on, we realized that, but we did not use the opportunity at an international level to deal with what the constitution says in the preamble are injustices of the past. So I'll request that uh, we try our best as the department to deal with that particular matter. There's also in your report uh, that you, you, you couldn't achieve a matter relating to, if I had to correctly, the, the review of membership in some of the international bodies. If you could just give uh, some of the details related to that particular matter. My last issue is we have an experience in government uh, whether you listen to the president in SONA, quarterly reports, annual reports, and so on, there will always be issues about uh, siloism within government, compartmentalism, where there's, a, there's a difficulties of synergy, of collaboration uh, among the departments. It will be better if, uh, even if it's not in this meeting, in future, the department should indicate other critical departments that we should be working with in a vita and the extent to which we may be getting either cooperation or the opposite in as far as working with those departments are concerned, like uh, economic development, home affairs, uh, police, and so on and so forth. Yeah, those are the, uh, the issues. We'll now give uh, over to you, uh, Honorable Comrade Deputy Minister Bortes and your team to now respond to the matters that have been raised. If the Honorable Deputy hello. Minister hello. is hello, not there. Hello, Chair. Yes, Chair, okay. I, if, if with your indulgence, Chair, I thought we just allow maybe the department to respond to the issues the PCF raised in terms of your performance targets, et cetera. And then I would want to maybe conclude our response with the more substantive uh, uh, political uh, uh, comments. 
Okay, Honorable Voters, I, I didn't want to move away from the practice that uh, the minister will then say this one will deal with this, this one will do, but I understand. Uh, Acting Director General Loss, over to you and your collective uh, to, to respond to the matters, and then in the end, you'll come in, uh, Deputy Minister. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Chair. And thank you to the members of the committee for those valuable inputs that seek to enrich uh, the department's work. Indeed, uh, the committee members, the honorable members have touched on um, various issues which uh, we have decided to uh, uh, integrate into different spectrum as is in our department and in branches. Uh, if I may, uh, Chair, uh, Honorable Msana, Honorable Nkosi, Honorable Mbanza, and late, later, Honorable Bergman, they, they, they touched on pertinent uh, issues on how South Africa conducts its foreign policy. And uh, if we were to be specific and uh, 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 and elabor elaborate on these matters because we were responding to to we were responding to the quota uh, one quota two based on the APP. However, we do have evidence and we are able to elaborate on what South Africa has done uh, on the political front. Uh, the honorable members that have mentioned, they spoke, uh, they wanted more information and uh, tangible information on what South Africa is doing in Lesotho and on how far we are and uh, our, 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 what we are doing in Mozambique and uh, Swatini came out strongly and uh, later uh, honorable Sane spoke about the West Africa insertion. If you do allow a uh, honorable chair, before, before I come on finance, SCM, ICT, and the processes on bilateral engagement and multilateral and more of the issues that were raised here, uh, I would uh, invite uh, 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 for Masichi, Masangai, Mr. Masangai, to speak on Lesotho, Mozambique, and Eswatini. Mr. Maswanga is the director responsible for the SATAC. And thereafter, for Masichi uh, Goso, Mr. Goso will speak on the West Africa uh, insertions or holistically on what is happening in the West Africa uh, region, and uh, more especially, we've just come back uh, from West Africa recently and maybe on what has just happened in Guinea-Bissau. Uh, through you, Chair, may I kindly uh, invite uh, Mr. Maswanga in? Yes, same problem. Uh, th th thank you very much, uh, DG, acting DG, and uh, through you, let, let me also uh, extend my greetings and thanks to the Honorable Chair and the Honorable Members of the portfolio committee and and good afternoon to uh, colleagues who are also in attendance <laughs> um honorable chair and, and and members of the the portfolio committee uh, perhaps let, let me st uh, state the obvious um just as an opening statement we we uh, as south africa started uh, chairing the organ last year august uh, taking over from uh, the Republic of Botswana. Um, and basically what, what it meant was that we would be taking um, issues that um, uh, had already, you know, or, or had been obtaining, especially uh, 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 peace and security issues um, that they've been obtaining uh, before we came, we came in as a chair. Of course, we, we were the incoming chair, so we would have um, interacted with these issues even before taking the chairship. And, and one particular issue that we've been interacting with before taking the chairship is the facilitation in, the, in, in Lesotho, uh, which is a perennial issue and it has various dimensions. Um, 
and of course uh, our president being the the facilitator and appointed by by sadak we uh, had um, also appointed um the, the former deputy chief justice to to do the facilitation on on his behalf <laughs> based on the roadmap that was adopted uh, three years ago we can safely indicate uh, honorable chair that we we have made quite an, a lot of progress in in, in the, the suit of course the 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 dictum that um, the problems of the suit will be solved by the uh, basutu themselves will still remain our, our role is just to facilitate as the the, the name of our, our or the, the, the nomenclature of our our intervention uh, prescribes so this year at, um, something that we, we see as as very concrete is that the basutu will be going um, will be having the uh, parliamentary elections. And of course, uh, uh, the elections will be based on a reformed constitution, which is um, a product of our facilitation. You would know, um, Honorable Chair, that there's, there's also the reform authority that was established there, which, which basically worked towards um, uh, developing the constitution. Because our vision, um, which is also the, vi the vision of, of SADAC, is that we would want to see a Lesotho uh, that is united, uh, that has got um, inst institutions, both legislative and executive, um, that are also respected by, by everyone, uh, where there's also a, a military oversight and there's no, there's no overreach between the, the police and the military in as far as gov governance issues are concerned. Um, that's what we're working towards. We hope that um, this, these elections uh, being one of the watersheds in the general reform of um, governance in, in Lesotho, that it will, it will um, basically um, assist the region um, to arrive where, where we want the region to, to arrive. Um, and, and obviously, um, beyond our chairship, the, 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 the heads of state will, 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 will decide whether South Africa should continue with the facilitation. But so far, we believe that we, we have really traveled with this journey um, uh, since, since our president was um, appointed as the facility. And, and, and hence, we, 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 we recognize and, and um, we are grateful that, we, that, that they'll now be embarking on that democratic or, or expression of uh, the, 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 the democratic will. On, on um, um, Mozambique, Honorable Chair, th this is a very, very complex issue and I'm sure um, members of the portfolio committee do have that appreciation. Um, and it's not only complex in, you know, just at the level of execution, but even at the level of conception, um, in the earlier in the earlier days before before we we, we could agree on uh, the deployment of the Sadak uh, mission in Mozambique, which is called uh, Samin, um, we we could not, or, or th there was some uh, difference of, of opinion as to what is it that we should call what is happening in Mozambique? Is it is it terrorism? Is it um, violent um, extremism? Is it insurgency and so on and so, and so forth? So so that is very important, Chair, because even the Mozambican themselves, if you listen uh, how they conceptualize what is happening there. You know, sometimes it also put, puts us in a very difficult situation as uh, SADAC, and that also talks to how you want to deal with it. But currently, Chair, we, we, we are at what, what we call scenario six, which is basically, um, uh, so, so there's the scenario six and, and then there's five, and then four, and then it goes down. But six is basically a scenario where um, the role of the military uh, is very important, especially special forces, to to try and um, and pacify the, the region um, itself. Make sure that um, there is uh, you know forceful combat 
uh, with um, what what you call uh, terrorists um, and 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 uh, a reclaim of the territories that that they 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 they, 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 um, they took from the Zimbabwean uh, authorities. So uh, so the, the role of the military is very very important. Um, and you you you'd recall that uh, the initial uh, initially the Samim was supposed to be in Mozambique for for three months, and we've always been extending because we recognize the fact that um, winning the battle against that very organized and well armed um, um, armed uh, 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 um, militia is not is not easy. Um, in fact, the our, the latest meeting that took place in Malawi uh, this January on the 12th of January uh, decided to extend the the the, the mandate of uh, of Samim to um, uh, April, but of course the the head of the mission and the, and the the military component will also advise. And, uh, um, as and when that particular time arrived, whether there would be need for um, another extension. Um, be, uh, because there's also, uh, apart from the military part, you, you also need to deal with um, issues uh, re uh, relating to social economic um, stabilization. The Mozambicans have developed what they call a a, a Cabo de Delgado a reconstruction and development plan, uh, which is now has been adopted or embraced by SADAC. So, but our role is basically to assist in, in implementing the, the plan. That's, that's on, on the socio economic and humanitarian uh, side. And then on, on the military, uh, of, of course, we, we have deployed um, our troops uh, together with um, uh, Adam. Adam um, member states, you know, uh, you know, uh, Tanzania, um, uh, Malawi, Botswana. There's also um, uh, member states that are also, uh, I mean, they've contributed, you know, equipment. And then there's also those who who have just um, seconded uh, non-military staff. So that, that that's that's basically um, where, where we are. There's um, there's also um, a, a, a lot of activity being undertaken by the SADAC executive secretary. Um, he has been mandated by the January uh, uh, extraordinary uh, summit of heads of state to also to engage the AU um, uh, in, in, uh, with respect to its support on both financially but also in terms of. Uh, Equipment that is there because the the, the there's realization that um, uh, Samim has got a very limited capacity. But Chair, as as I said, uh, it's a it's an ongoing situation that we're, we're really dealing with. It is the first time that the the region is dealing with something of this nature. Um, um, so so I I think as as we proceed, there's a there, there's a lot of learning uh, that is taking place. Um, and and there's, there's 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 a lot of um, you know collaboration you know among mem member states to to see to to make sure that the, the situation is is uh, brought back to normalcy. As um, the honourable chair, as the as the current chair, we we were also seized with the situation. You would also appreciate, uh, uh, honourable chair, that. This is also one one situation that we inherited from our predecessor uh, Botswana, um, the 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 outgoing um, uh, chair um, of the organ. The issues in Eswatini, I wouldn't want to go deeper into them. They are also historical uh, and very very sensitive, um, and various groupings even within South Africa would different uh, positions. But in as far as uh, the SADAC, um, our role is to try and mediate uh, the situation. There's um, a roadmap that is currently being negotiated with, with um, the authorities in, 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 um, in Eswatini. Um, but, but I think generally they've agreed that they would need to undergo 
or to embark on, on uh, mediation um, so that the parties can find each other. I think, uh, Chair, um, or, or perhaps the, 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 the latest is that the terms of reference of the mediation is uh, currently being negotiated between um, the, the members of Troika and then, and then um, as soon as the, the text has been agreed, it will be taken back to the authorities in, in, in Eswatini. Uh, and of course, every stakeholder will be consulted to make sure that the that mediation happens within agreed terms of reference. Um, uh, Chair, I, I think let, let me let me stop there. Um, and then if, if there's any addition, my my seniors will do so. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Ambassador Lucy. Uh, uh, honorable Chair and the honorable members, indeed, West Africa's uh, issues uh, of instability and uh, cause is a reality. And uh, as such, uh, President Ramaphosa did uh, 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 visit uh, certain countries of uh, the West Africa region last December and with the objective of enhancing relations uh, both at the political level and the uh, trade level with, the, with these countries. And as such also interacting and enhancing relations with these countries as members of uh, the Air Corps. Uh, uh, and as such, uh, uh, we, we, we're getting very close to the, the, the countries of, of the West African region. Indeed, uh, the, the challenges and continued uh, uh, trend is worrying and South Africa have issued uh, uh, um, statements in that regard. And we continue to work with the uh, ECOWAS and the African Union uh, in, in, in condemning and working uh, uh, some of the mechanisms around dealing with these matters. Uh, uh, same as, uh, I mean, the situation in Mali is still concerning the Kina Faso uh, 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 last week and also Guinea Conakry and latest uh, attempt has been in uh, in Guinea Bissau uh, yesterday uh, and uh, and we have already drafted a statement in that regard but what is encouraging is that echo uh, is very diligent and uh, and uh, condemning these uh, these uh, attempts and uh, and uh, coups that have taken place however i think uh, as a continent we're still short of uh, preventing these uh, but we know that uh, there they are players uh, outside of the continent that are also uh, to some extent influencing these uh, uh, illegal activities and uh, things that we don't, we no longer need in the African continent. Th thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, there was a question on political engagement and processes, Ambassador Mloy we'll talk on the political engagements uh, that includes the economic diplomacy that we conduct in the continent and Ms. Lobe uh, will deal with the processes and reporting. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Ambassador, Ambassador Lossi and thanks to uh, uh, and all the members of this honorable committee. Uh, I, I just wish to respond to two issues, mm. which I think uh, came out pretty sharply from the inputs of uh, uh, honorable uh, members, Datenkosi uh, and Meswats. Uh, on, on reporting and the results, the concrete results of the work that we do. But maybe let me say before I go any further, uh, and I take the cue here from uh, my dear Deputy Minister, uh, that if, if I say anything wrong in this meeting, I hope you will, you will forgive me and uh, we, we can talk uh, uh, after this in his office, but uh, I, I will just be absolutely uh, straightforward. <clears throat> uh, 
And I think the, the issues that uh, the Nkosian Neswap raised with regard to reporting and results, the, the key question there was, what is it that the DIRCO brings home as buttered bread and bread that is buttered on both sides for the people of South Africa to eat? What exactly is the benefit that uh, DIRCO can show? Because the people of South Africa spend so much money on the work that we as a department do. But I guess the, the subtext of what Ndaten Kosi and Neswart are saying, and I think this is not only the concern of Ndaten Kosi and Neswart, it's the concern of the people of South Africa, is what is the return on our investment? Why should we keep a deal going? Uh, but what is the return on, on, on the investment? I want to focus on these two things uh, because uh, I think the uh, Tengosi and Meswat are certainly spot on. But uh, with your permission, the Mahumapilo and Ambassador, can I just tell you a very brief story, half a second, so that I can sketch the, 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 the background to this? I come from Castel, which is in the northeastern Free State, a very small. A village up there. And if members of the committee do not know where it is, uh, don't worry, I know where it is and I, uh, and, and, and I love it. I'm a plus Jaffe uh, to use an African. <laughs> so uh, one time when I visited my mom and she, she's uh, an 84 year young girl and uh, uh, I, I was at home and one of her neighbors, uh, they've been neighbors for a very long time. And uh, when she saw me, obviously greeted her and all that. And then Mama Hatere said to me, Francis, your mom told me that you work for government, right? And then she said, look around here, look around. And this is the place where you come from. Why are we so poor? Why don't we have houses here? Look at our streets. We have no water. We still use pit toilets here. What are you doing? You say you work for government, right? Isn't government supposed to be addressing all these things? You, Wanawanake, like you, my grandson, what are you doing when you say you work for government because uh, things are not right here? And that, uh, that from an ordinary South Africans is a telling question. And I was thinking, uh, Francis, you work for, for deal when you've been working for government for a very long time, and you say you are responsible for human rights and humanitarian affairs. Quite frankly, what is the contribution that uh, you and the unit that you work, you work for in deal? What is your contribution to addressing these issues that not only Mema Hatere, but all South Africans represented today here by Datem Kosi and Neswart and other members of, of parliament are worried about. So that's a, that's a brief uh, background that I wanted to, to provide to the answer that uh, uh, I'm going to give. And, and as I said, Datem uh, Ahumapilo, in DIRCO, I'm the chief director responsible for human rights and humanitarian affairs. And I am very aware that People do not eat human rights, but they eat bread, okay? And in our APP, you will see that uh, uh, our objective, we always put our objective as uh, we want to influence norms, values, principles, and standards uh, at a multilateral level to bring them in line with our constitution, uh, so that the values, the norms, the principles we, we, we develop at these multilateral uh, uh, institutions and level are consistent with our constitution and with the values of our constitution, because that way, when the international community thinks the same way that we do, we have a chance of uh, uh, you know, addressing conflict, uh, issues of development, uh, human rights, empowerment of women, the same way, instead of every time whenever these issues are raised at the multilateral level, they are highly contested and makes 
a global agreement very difficult. But if that is all that we do, the question still remains, what is it that we are bringing on the tables of South Africans as a dividend? I just want to, to take, uh, to, to give an example of the kind of work that uh, we do, which translates into this bread and butter issues that are so important to the lives of, uh, of, of, of South Africans. And I wanted to, to agree with Peter Tempos and Meswap that maybe, maybe in our reporting, of the work that we do, particularly on the concrete results, we as Dirko, I think we are very modest. And, uh, and maybe that is, another, that is a, an important issue that we need to look at in our uh, reporting next time, or that our reporting, particularly on the concrete uh, outcomes, is, is a bit inchoate. And uh, I will be the first one to accept that because. Uh, as I said, I've been with Dilgo for a very long time and uh, was uh, High Commissioner to India and Ambassador to Sudan. So I, I, I see the, the grain of truth in what in that and uh, are saying. And I just want to give an example to show that even though uh, these concrete uh, uh, results that Nkosi uh, and that Nkosi and Meswa are talking about do not appear to be reflected there, it doesn't mean that uh, uh, they are not there. They are there, and I think if we as DIRCO would take this uh, concrete result and report on concrete results that our nations and our head office is doing in this, we will be in a, we'll need a special uh, sitting with the Honorable Committee uh, to, to, to go through that. But let me just quickly, and, and I want to be very quick here, the examples that, that we give. That, uh, that uh, uh, show how the work that we do translates into uh, a concrete results. I'll give an example. In 2020, the Secretary General of the UN and the Executive Director of the World Food Program wrote to President uh, Ramaphosa asking that uh, South Africa become one of the three uh, humanitarian assistance half on the continent. One uh, humanitarian assistance half was in, in Ghana, one was in Ethiopia, and another one, the Secretary General wanted it to be in Johannesburg. And this was a global response to address COVID-19 at the very beginning of 2020. Now that uh, temporary humanitarian assistance, South Africa agreed, the President Ramaphosa said, yes, we would want to be uh, one of the, the hubs here so that we can lend our hand and our support. Obviously, this is under our humanitarian diplomacy. We want it to be part of the global response to, to addressing COVID-19. And for us as South Africa, addressing COVID-19 on the continent. It's all right, yeah, and It's all right, yeah, and the Delcoda. To go about the camera, you are hard. Okay, so I was saying. When we as South Africa agreed to establish that temporary humanitarian assistance in Johannesburg here, uh, it was beneficial in a number of ways. First of all, 
we were able as South Africa to give the lifeline as it were to South African Airways. And members of the committee will recall that it was during the hard lockdown, international skies all over the world were closed, but uh, through the, the activities of the temporary humanitarian assistance, we were able to transport humanitarian cargo, humanitarian personnel throughout the, the, the African continent. And these uh, the flights were, carried, were, 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 were done by SAA. We flew international humanitarian workers and health uh, care personnel to countries such as the DRC, Angola, the Namibia, Botswana, uh, Lesotho, Eswatini, Zimbabwe, and further up uh, to countries such as uh, Tanzania to deliver medical uh, facilities, to deliver humanitarian cargo, uh, medical supplies to people who would otherwise not have been able to access uh, say PPE, humanitarian uh, assistance and all that during that hard lockdown. And even here in South Africa, there were many uh, humanitarian workers and health and medical personnel who came in here to build medical facilities in the townships, uh, to provide the training to our own uh, health workers and, 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 and all this. And the, the long and short of what I'm saying is that uh, there is so much that uh, translates into tangible uh, results from the work that we do. But uh, uh, we as you go do, do not take it great credit for that. For instance, it will be interesting to find what was the financial benefit for SAA because they were our prime uh, uh, airline to facilitate this, this uh, uh, movement. It would be interesting to know how many of South African uh, companies benefited from the contracts that they signed with the UN to deliver and transport medical supplies, uh, human personnel all around it. Uh, SWAT because those economic benefits and how many people were employed, how many companies came on board to provide this, because uh, it is through the, the work that the DIRCO did, which is coordinated with the United Nations, with the Food Welfare Program and the, and the presidency and DIRCO to come up with, with this uh, the proposal so that it is, uh, this uh, uh, works. Now, the, the, the last example that I, I want to, to, to relate it to also uh, has everything to do with the work that we do to provide humanitarian assistance. In our APP, the, the, the members of the committee will see that one of the objectives that we want to, to achieve is for South Africa to host the permanent United Nations Humanitarian Response Depot here in South Africa because the activities of the temporary humanitarian hub have now wound up with uh, the opening of the skies and stuff like that. But we now want the UN to establish a permanent humanitarian response depot on the African continent, and that must be in South Africa. Because at this moment, I think there are about seven humanitarian uh, response depots all over the world, but we don't have one on the African continent. And it is our our ambition, it is our desire. We want to move mountains. We want to go to the sun and the moon and to planet Jupiter and back. We want to win that bid to host the UN Humanitarian Response Depot here uh, in South Africa. And in order for us to, to, to achieve that, we think that South Africa needs to continue to, uh, to maintain its leadership on the African continent as the biggest humanitarian actor on the continent, a country that is able to live up to its financial co uh, commitment to humanitarian agencies here and so on. Because, and, and I'm going to conclude it now, Dr. Mahomet, and, and I already thank you for your indulgence. You know, when I was in, in Sudan as ambassador there, and the members of the committee would know that we had a huge humanitarian contingent in the form of peacekeepers and other South African workers under the United Nations uh, uh, mission in Darfur. It was, and, and one of the biggest uh, 
areas of responsibility of our nation in Sudan was to support the African Union and UN humanitarian assistance in that country. And it used to gladden my heart, honorable members, when every time I have meetings with the heads of the UN humanitarian agencies like UNICEF, uh, WFP, and they give me the report of the work that they have done. And they say to me, Ambassador, you know, all these tents, these thousands and thousands of tents that we are using for refugees, we procured these from South Africa. The vaccines that we use for the animals of all these uh, uh, nomads that uh, uh, go all over the food, so we procure those from South Africa. We procure the chemicals and the machinery to build wells in Darfur, in South Kordofan, and Blue Nile states under the humanitarian programs of the UN. We procure this from, uh, from South Africa. And they will give me a list of the things that they want to buy from South Africa. And the responsibility of the nation would be to see who in South Africa or which department like DTI get them in touch with the UN so that uh, all these things can be procured in South Africa. Now, we, the UN was procuring all these things when we are not the, the, the resident humanitarian response depot. Now, the work that we have done with the humanitarian response depot from other countries is, is that if we can succeed to host the UN humanitarian response depot here in South Africa, the economic spin-offs will be huge. It means that for for the entire African continent, humanitarian supplies will be procured from South Africa. You name it, South Africa will be able to provide that. Whether you're talking of equipment, whether you're talking of food, whether you're talking of medicines, whatever is needed in the humanitarian field will be procured here in South Africa. And that means jobs, that means employment, that means a contribution to, to, to fighting these uh, uh, triple challenges that, that, that we talk about. It means money and bread buttered on both sides for South Africans. And that will come about as a result of the work that we will do, campaigning, lobbying, playing our role, and, and, and so on and so forth. So I just wanted to point out, and thank you, Dr. Mahuma Filo, for the indulgence, that there is so much that we are doing, and maybe in our reporting, this must come, must come out, but we hope that uh, we are not going to be accused of being compass and of being big-headed as a department and so on and so forth. Natema Humapilu and members of the committee, thank you so much for your indulgence. I know it's, it's, it's a long-winded uh, uh, tirade, but thank you very much indeed. Melosi, over to you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. I want to agree with the honorable members. Maybe we would need a session where we would concretize our work and come up with tangible on what is it exactly that South Africa is doing? How are we helping that uh, that rural area in Madam Lobe maybe just summarize because I think in ways of example, um, Madam Loi has touched on many things. Then uh, Madam Koko, you'll quickly talk on BRICS so that we conclude the political side and then we'll move on to ICT and other issues. Lobe? Thank you very much, Acting DG, and thanks to the Honorable Chairperson. Um, Honorable Chairperson, we welcome and appreciate the comments that have been made by members of the committee uh, on our manner of reporting and to some extent on our planning obligations. And we note that from uh, the comments of members of the committee, there is a need for the department to, to amplify its outputs and outcomes as part of our uh, reports to the uh, portfolio committee. We undertake to continuously improve our reporting to the portfolio committee and ensure that in our presentations, there's tangible uh, uh, outcomes on each area of work that the department is engaged in. However, the current presentation focused on the engagements that took place and touched on the deliberations that we've had 
uh, with uh, other democracies as well as our deliberations in the different institutions of uh, global governance. Um, Chairperson, you will note that in the previous meetings of the Portfolio Committee, particularly on our reporting obligations, there has been a view that the department should improve and the improvement uh, also, I think, extends to what we need to do with respect to our planning processes. And following uh, the, the engagements we've had with the Portfolio Committee previously, uh, we have now decided to disaggregate information with respect to the work that we do, uh, particularly on Program 2. And disaggregating this information has meant that as we report to the portfolio committee, as we report to uh, the Department of um, uh, Monitoring and Evaluation, as well as uh, to National Treasury, we specify what we do under program one in terms of our political engagements, in terms of our investment, work, trade promotions, and tourism. And disaggregating this kind of uh, 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 information has meant to us that we have moved away from generalizing uh, performance of the department to specificity in terms of us adhering uh, to what uh, Honorable Mpanza has referred to as the mass, uh, as the uh, smart principle. Now, in terms of this principle, what we did was to make sure that we specify first what is it that we want to achieve. Hence, she, uh, we have aggregated uh, this information. And uh, by disaggregating the information, we are specific on what the department needs to focus on, but we are also specific on what we need to do in order uh, for us to uh, make sure that our work as the Department of International Relations and Cooperation impact on our national uh, priorities. We've also made sure that uh, these um, uh, targets are measurable, the four targets that I have uh, spoken about and measurable in this case it's not only about numbers because one of the things that we had to do particularly for this financial year was to ensure that we are not only focusing on the uh, quantity of our work in terms of numbers but we also focus on the quality of work with respect to the actual impact of the work of the department of international relations and cooperation on uh, the uh, triple challenge of poverty, unemployment, and inequality. Now, if you look at these four areas that I have spoken about, all of them talks to what is it that we are practically doing as the department in order for us uh, to uh, 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 contribute to the fight against the triple uh, challenges that I have referred to. We have made sure that our targets are achievable and by them being achievable, we have noted that in the past, we'll just give a report on the political work that we are doing without specifically saying, uh, because of this uh, a kind of posture that we are taking, and as an example, uh, putting Africa at the center of foreign policy, these are the things that we uh, uh, want to, to do. Now, in ensuring that our uh, 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 targets are achievable. We are now specific in terms of the uh, areas that we um, we would want to focus on as a department. And again, a, a, a reference is to the four points I have referred to. The relevance of our targets, of course, all the four areas speaks to how South Africa can use its footprint abroad in order for us uh, to deal with our uh, domestic challenges and the relevance here has to do with issues of economic development, uh, with issues of people to people mechanism, uh, 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 with respect to the uh, issues of trade and investment, etc. Our targets are time bound because for every quarter, there are specific things that we are required to achieve as a department and at the end of the, uh, the, the financial year, we are required to make an analysis that talks to the mandate of the, in the department, the impact of our work, as well as how we have practically contributed uh, in dealing with the triple challenge as the pri priority for the sixth administration. Now, having said that, uh, honorable members, 
Uh, we are following uh, the template and the template uh, that uh, Honorable Mpanza was uh, uh, talking to relates to the framework for managing performance information. Now, in terms of this uh, framework, uh, quarterly, we report to uh, the Department of Performance Monitoring and Evaluation, and these are the reports that have all the empirical evidence in terms of the work that has been undertaken, whether it's um, the political work, it's investment. So there is, there is that report that can be made available for each quarter to uh, the uh, uh, committee. We also work uh, on the basis of the revised framework for annual uh, uh, performance plans for government departments, which also says to us that the era of just ticking boxes in terms of numbers of events that are undertaken is, is no more. The focus now is, of course, you've had an engagement on this specific matter. What is the impact of that engagement uh, on uh, the overall uh, work of government? And I think this whole uh, uh, approach to both reporting and planning assists government departments to uh, uh, converge at the center in terms of the whole of government approach. Because you'll know that in most of the work that we do, we work as facilitators for other uh, departments. For instance, the work that we do uh, with respect to economic diplomacy, we facilitate initiatives that practically will then be also taken up by uh, DTIC in terms of how they become the practical uh, uh, government work in in, in the country. Now, uh, honorable uh, uh, members, uh, deputy minister, what I think we need to do, I think we need to provide the portfolio committee with the quarterly reports that includes the information that uh, honorable uh, Bekin Kosi, uh, honorable Suarez, honorable Mbanza have referred to because I think that as a result of us trying to summarize the work, it may as well be that we were not specific on uh, 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 translating uh, outcomes to practical outputs uh, that can uh, uh, be placed before the committee. And I think this is one area uh, where we can improve uh, 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 acting DG. Now, I just want to make two last points. The first one is that even though we have these four points uh, that we I have referred to on a uh, program uh, two and what needs to happen, uh, on the political engagements, I wish to request the portfolio committee to note that the political engagements are ongoing and the analysis of the actual impact may not be immediate. And as the portfolio committee noted in the annual report, we managed to give an analysis of the impact of our political engagements. And this is something that again, as we uh, uh, prepare the annual report, will also focus on the impact of our uh, political engagements. Um, on uh, program three, uh, honorable members, you'd know that under program three, each engagement that we've had has two elements. The first one is either what South Africa uh, was pushing for in terms of our uh, national interest or the kind of language that we uh, were uh, 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 we, we were pushing for in terms of how uh, certain uh, outcomes uh, should be captured. Secondly, it is um, about Sorry, it, it is it is also indicates the outcomes of certain processes. If I may, a, a, a honorable a, a chairperson, to draw the attention of the portfolio committee, particularly on the meeting of chairpers. Even though uh, we are reporting on the different meetings of the chairpers, we also give an outcome on uh, how the work of the chairpers has translated practically uh, in uh, the issues that relates to uh, economic uh, uh, diplomacy, et cetera. Uh, Honorable uh, DG, if, I, if you allow, I will uh, end there and say that on the target that was not achieved, and this is what the Honorable Chairperson has raised, at that target relates to uh, the work that a report that we're supposed or strategy we're supposed to develop with respect to our membership of uh, international organizations. 
Now, what we noted uh, during this particular period, this past uh, 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 two quarters, is that we did not increase our memberships. We did not apply for any membership. And as a result, there was no need for us to draft a strategy relating to memberships because in the past for every uh, organization that uh, South Africa is part of, we developed a strategy that talks to what we wanted to achieve out of that uh, specific membership and all that. Now, moving forward, we've been engaging internally on how best uh, we can rephrase uh, that target in a manner that would speak amongst others to issues that relates to uh, the review of uh, uh, the membership of different organizations and the relevance thereof, et cetera. But at this stage, if we were to look specifically at that target, it was about developing a strategy for membership and we did not uh, have to apply for any uh, membership during the period under review. Thank you very much, Chair. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. My name is Cindy Swamukuku. I will respond on the BRICS uh, question. And uh, I would uh, leave uh, the question on Israel to the acting DG and Deputy Minister Bautis. Thank you. Uh, we can only report that in the BRICS, uh, we have 10 projects that are BRICS funded, and they are funded through the New Development Bank. Uh, these were approved uh, to date and they are worth above 4.4 billion US dollars, which will be around 75 billion South African rands. Uh, these are inclusive of the 2 billion that was for the COVID emergency loans um, that uh, took care of the emergency needs as a result of the COVID-19 situation. The other projects are for to, towards the infrastructure development of our SOEs, uh, like uh, Transnet and uh, as well as ESCOM. Uh, I would leave the report to that. Thank you very much. Honorable Chair, can we continue? Are you allowing us to continue? Yes, you, you continue to say who must come next until okay. the mini, the deputy minister. Okay, thank you very much, Honorable Chair. There was a question on ICT, uh, procurement of ICT, uh, tools of trade. Uh, there was a question on digital strategy and so forth. I would like to invite our CIO to respond on this and the progress thus far. Uh, thank you, uh, Acting DG. Uh, good afternoon, Honorable Chairperson uh, Mauma Pelu and honorable, honorable uh, members. From an ICT uh, update, uh, Acting DG, uh, because this reporting is for quarter one and two, uh, most of the updates that we were providing were mainly on the processes that uh, we were busy with with regard to us getting to a point where we can see tangible uh, results. And as far as uh, today, I can safely report that uh, the tangible results have uh, uh, materialized and we will be able to report in the next meeting uh, in terms of the numbers that we have managed to uh, you know, deploy uh, on site with regard to tools of trade. So there is a progress with regard uh, to this uh, outcome. And there also the project regarding modernization, there is also a progress. Safe to say that all this now are becoming evident with, uh, I mean, when we were busy with quarter two, three to quarter four, and then we'll report uh, in terms of the updates, how far we are with that implementation. It is good progress so far, and ensuring that at the end, uh, we will be able to modernize uh, the environment. Ambassador, there was also a point regarding uh, outages in missions which were relating to ICT, especially affecting 
the finances to be um, to be closed there in time. I would just like to indicate to the committee that most of the challenges that we have were related to us not being able to repair in time because we could not commission uh, tools or replacement spares as quick as we would have uh, wanted to because of international restrictions in terms of traveling and uh, getting the diplomatic back you know, in time. And you'd find that in most uh, cases, it takes us three to four weeks to be able to commission a uh, replacement uh, equipment. And as such, in most cases, it will overlap with a month and it then impacts on the mission not being able to close uh, their books uh, in time. We are hoping that now with this uh, level one uh, restrictions, uh, uh, you know, softening, it will, uh, you know, improve with how quick then we commission our space uh, to missions that are having ICT uh, challenges. I think, uh, Ambassador, I've touched mainly on, on the three items that uh, came out uh, I mean, strongly uh, with regard to Honorable, uh, Honorable uh, Member Swar, as well as in course on ICT delays. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Brenda, maybe in one, just one sentence, can you just summarize what progresses we need? Because we're falling back to what the committee says we're generalizing. You could tell the committee that uh, how many laptops or computers have now been delivered? What have we done with the digital strategy? Just in one sentence, and then we move to ARF and sub SATPA. One sentence, Brenda, without belabeling. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Apologies for that. We have so far received uh, about 1,300 uh, devices for head office. We have also received uh, servers for a head office as part of the data center modernization. And we have uh, deployed Office 365 as part of our administration tool to ensure that we optimize the utilization of these laptops that will be utilized uh, by the officials. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, invite uh, Advocate Divet to speak on uh, uh, Foreign Service Act. How far are we? What progress have we made? Yeah, honorable members, um, good afternoon. And uh, thank you, Ambassador um, Lucy. Um, yes, indeed, um, we all, um, have been confined to this reporting because we're talking about the two quarters, but um, it, we have made uh, progress on the regulations for, uh, and the guidelines for the Foreign Service Act. Um, we have added, it was cleared by the DGF um, and it was also discussed in the ministerial meeting um, and between the DG and the minister. And the minister indicated that she would want to have a discussion uh, together with the deputy ministers um, and her advisors, um, so that there's more, so that she has a better uh, understanding of exactly uh, what the implications of the regulations are. We are currently waiting for uh, for a meeting um, uh, on in this respect um, uh, as soon as the ministers schedule allow this, and of course the schedules of the deputy ministers. Um, that is the latest report. Um, the last re meeting that we had was in December, um, and we are ready to meet with the minister, um, as I said, as soon as she's available. Thank you. Advocate Devet, can you talk about the processes we've taken through the Justice Department whilst waiting for this? Yes, indeed, Ambassador. We have submitted the uh, the regulations, the draft regulations uh, for pre-certification to the Justice Department. This is just a requirement 
um, where they look at this in the six departments, then with finalization of the text before it goes um, into um, a discussion further. Um, as indicated before, um, we intend to brief the, the portfolio committee um, as soon as we uh, we receive the, um, the clearance of the minister um, and also um, the, the pre-certification of the Department of Justice. Um, we, um, we, we have inquired this week uh, how far they are and they indicated that they are still busy uh, looking at the text and they will revert back to us as soon as possible. They are aware that this is a quite urgent matter as it has been long outstanding. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you very much, uh, Advocate. Uh, last, uh, I would invite, uh, no, not last, I would invite ARF and SATPA. Then after that, uh, uh, Dineo can you respond on finance issues? And I see there's a chief for supply chain management maybe also respond on the issues that before then I conclude on the recommendations that were made by the chair before handing over to our deputy minister. Madam Tinewo. Um, thank you, Ambassador. Uh, Chairperson, I will respond um, on the issue of SATPA. The way we are is minister has um, written to the minister of finance with the concerns that were raised uh, by him yeah. and with a request for a meeting so the issue can be finalized and be before cabinet uh, before mm -hmm. the end of this financial year. So we are hoping that we will get a response from the Minister of Finance in February so we can finalize the draft bill for presentation to cabinet. Um, thank you, Honorable Chairperson and Acting DG. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Sengiwe. Thank you, um, Ambassador um, <clears throat> and Honorable Chair. I will first um, deal with the question that was asked by Honorable Faber, um, where he was asking about the issue of the, of the property management and development, if it has changed from public works to DECO. Yes, it has changed from public <coughs> works to DECO. Um, um, which is also regulated in the Foreign Service Act. And following that, we have already approved the property management strategy as well as the disposal policy. And we are implementing those documents as we speak today. <clears throat> and then on the issues of the impact on delivery of um, or service delivery, the issue of the bid um, evaluation committee. I will address this question and also uh, cover what um, Honorable Swart asked about. Maybe we'll start there, um, Ambassador Ambassador Dosi. The, the, as I sit today, yes, it will sound like we are making excuses with the with the with the <clears throat> with the reasonings that we are giving to the Honorable Committee around the the spending in Program One when we bring in the issue of the bid um, evaluation committee, simply because these are members or senior <clears throat> members of the department, which are coming from different committees, but I mean, which are coming from different uh, branches. But the truth is that if those members don't make time to come to this bid evaluation committee, it then hampers the service delivery from our side as branch finance, because for us to deliver on the implementation of the property management strategy, we need the bid evaluation committee to evaluate the conditional assessment reports that we have received for us to go ahead. So that is the difficulty that we are currently having, Honorable Chair which then um, the acting DG is um, seriously dealing with this matter. And yes, in the third quarter, the same reasoning will be provided because we, we were still, um, um, uh, we were still um, encountering the, the challenges with the bid evaluation committee to sit and deal with these uh, uh, issues in the department. So as and when the bid evaluation committee don't sit, the procurement doesn't go forward, which means that the budget 
uh, does not, um, we are not able to spend the budget as per our plans. <clears throat> then the issue on the interface uh, between bus and the mission uh, systems. The, the CIO has already touched on, uh, on that matter, but uh, just to indicate as well that um, what, what we have a problem with, the main issue is that these two systems are, are, are not integrated. So you have to manually move information from one system, which is mission system, to the basic accounting system. And the question was, what are we doing about that as a department? Now, we have, uh, through the office of our CIO, written to National Treasury, requesting them to remove the monitorium um, that was placed in terms of departments to buy their own ICT systems. So we are requesting to, to, to procure from National Treasury a system that will be able to integrate um, the information from the mission electronically to the, to, the, to, the, to the system that is used by National Treasury. And that has to be in real time. So that is what we are doing. As soon as National Treasury gave us a go ahead that they are removing the monitorium, then we will be able to then uh, start with the process of getting that system that will be able to assist us to report in real time. So as yes, um, as, as long as Treasury has not responded to us on this matter, yes, um, Honorable Chairperson, we will still be coming back here and citing the very same problem that we are citing right now, um, which will also look like we are reporting on the old issues, but it's old issues and they are also current issues that we are still uh, dealing with. Other than that, um, Chairperson, um, I, I have taken note of all the, 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 the comments that were raised by, by, by the members of this committee and we will improve in our report going forward. Like, as you have indicated, we will indicate or list the missions that were unable to interface um, their information on the system. Thank you very much, Ambassador Moss. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, honorable members. Uh, the chair raised uh, uh, three issues that we have to, and this was also alluded to by uh, uh, honorable members. The chair spoke of consequence management and requested that maybe in the future, we indicate in the report going forward to the extent at which the consequence management process have financial implications. Uh, we have that uh, report directly available, both from the and, uh, Oxla, our legal uh, 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 unit, and we will gladly do that. And then uh, uh, said maybe we would need at some point to uh, bring to this committee an analysis, qualitative, quantitative and qualitative analysis on the impact made uh, in line with our national question, uh, such as the non-sexist, non-racism, and so forth. We would we will endeavor to embark on that uh, uh, exercise. Uh, honorable chair and uh, uh, we should uh, what is the interdepartmental dependency on the work that the department does and uh, there's quite a lot we work uh, very well with all the departments uh, DTIC uh, uh, even health home affairs and so forth especially on on binational commissions and so forth and the uh, would then uh, that and bring uh, and over and above, uh, honorable members, uh, uh, thank you. We took note of all the inputs uh, that were made, the valuable inputs that were made by uh, the honorable members. Through you, Chair, I hand over back to you uh, for our deputy minister, but I hand over to the honorable chair, if you allow. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ambassador Lossi and your collective for the responses that you have given. Before we go to Honorable Deputy Minister, Honorable Nkosi, I see your hand is up. No, Chair, I, I, I wanted to, to, to speak on the, on the issues that were raised earlier by Honorable Bergman. Uh, but I think Honorable Mbanza did. Only two issues, Chair. The first issue is that perhaps it would, it would help if the department, when it comes to report, uh, maybe on a three-month basis, et cetera, just to give us an update on current issues uh, happening in the department so that we avoid uh, this asymmetrical access to information by us as members of the committee. Uh, Honorable Bergman just reports about ambassadors that are doing that, ambassadors that are not doing that. We also have our own information on what is happening in the department, but because we respect our own committee protocols, we will not raise these issues in an unstructured manner. It will help if the department updates us, for example, what is happening, are there movements in, in, in deployments? What are the difficulties that are, are, are experienced by embassies or any other issue that is relevant and current for us. Uh, asymmetrical information creates an impression that other members of the committee have an on the pulse access to information in the department compared to others. So if we want to structure it, we can structure it. If we don't, then we can also report on what we know is happening in the corridors of the corridors of that department and it's going to lead to uh, a chaotic situation. So that's my suggestion first in that regard. And that as members will refrain from picking up issues and then reporting them as though they represent what, the, what is happening in the department. The second issue, Chair, um, although it's belated and perhaps if the, the deputy minister will cover it, but it just relates to the manner in which we engage on the issue of Palestine and Israel. The first thing is that, Chair, I think uh, it is condescending to suggest that uh, members of this committee read magazines um, and then take what is in the magazine and present it here. Uh, I take serious exception to that. Uh, we, we have access to a whole volumes and volumes of rit literature. Some of it existed even before we were born about this issue of Israel. And, and Palestine. Some of some of us participated in intensive debate at high school on this issue of Israel and Palestine. So I, I, I think it's very condescending for somebody to suggest really that we we leafing uh, a stag magazine or drug magazine uh, uh, and then lifting the issues and bringing them here. Uh, if if Honorable Bergman wishes, we can sit down and take him through on what we read in the situation of uh, uh, the Middle East and, and Asia, and in particular on the issue of, of Palestine and Israel. And I would, I would suggest Chair, that you, we take up his issue and convene a meeting, as we have said before, that we need to discuss this issue of, of Israel and Palestine. And lastly, the department has a policy on engagement on the Middle East uh, and Asia. And it is not incorrect for us as a committee to raise issues and follow them up on the basis of what the department does and engages in that region. It is completely in order and it is not going to, to, to change because uh, he feels closer on the issues of Israel. We, although he objectively says that, or, creates a facade that uh, really is, is objective. We know that is not objective. We know that uh, uh, his interest lies with uh, the continued occupation of, no, let me not call that may, may, I, may, I just, may I just refrain from, person, from, can I interrupt, please? May I just, so okay, may I just okay. finish? No, may no, I just, no Chair, Chairperson. I don't I, interrupt I, I, anybody when they I speak. Ask a point of order. It is not fair that the member comes. Wait, to wait a bit, Honorable Bergman. This, this is not correct. Honorable Bergman. 
No, this is honorable yes. father chairperson. Sorry, oh, honorable father. Sorry, sorry, yes. sorry. Sorry, chairperson. Sorry, honorable, sorry, sorry, honorable, honorable uh, Bergman for referring to honorable uh, father as as R. Bergman. The fact I mean, that you call the sorry, point of he, order. He's, honorable no, wait, um, Bergman's phone went wait, wait off. I think of battery. Honorable father, uh, wait sorry, a bit. Wait, wait a bit. Wait a bit. When you call a point of order. It's enough to say point of order. You don't proceed instantly to then say what is the point of order. Give the chair the chance to say, I now give you a platform to present your point of order. Then the chair will decide after listening to you as to whether that is a point of order or is not a point of order. So Honorable Nkosi was still on the platform and you called the point of order. So I'm now giving you the platform. I just want us to run the meeting or done. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. And please excuse me for that. I also must sometimes get, you know, as politicians, we get excited. Um, but, but Chairperson, I don't think it is fair for in We are losing you, Honorable Faber. Chairperson, can you hear me? Are you there, Honorable Father? Yeah, yes, can you hear me? Okay, yeah. Thanks. Sorry, Chairperson, as I say, yes, you are quite correct. Uh, we should stick with procedures. Um, as I say, as politicians, sometimes we do get excited quickly, and I, I ask um, to be forgiven for that quick interaction. But, but Chairperson, you know, I can't see that we cast expers um, aspersions on each other. I mean, I cannot because... Um, Maybe I look away or say something, say that this person is pro-Palestine or pro-Israel or pro this. Chairperson, then you then you can say because I'm white, I'm pro of your beer for like here. You know, and how, how, I cannot say that. You, we can make on each other. Chairperson, I, I, I just want to say so Honorable Bergman's phone is apparently yeah, Wait, let's listen, let's, let's wait no, for no, him no. to finish because I need to make a determination as to whether this is a point of order or not. Okay, 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 so, can so you so also go to my, my point of order after you finish? Point of order. Okay, no problem, Rampanza. You'll come in. All right, Father, finish your point so, of Chief order. Says, I, I, I do understand that Honorable Bergman's phone has been flat already by this time, so most probably he's not on. If he's on, I'm also asking for. Um, then I'm in the wrong, but he asked me that he doesn't know if his phone will hold. And I just don't feel it's fair to make aspersions while the member is not even on the platform maybe to talk about it. So, so my feeling is, Chairperson, yes, I do agree with the previous member. If there's going to be a discussion on it, let's then have a discussion on that, if, if that is, is the case. But, but please, I don't think on this platform now to come and make aspersions on any member's character or who he believes in and what, I, I don't think that's fair because as I said, then people can make this person on any one of us and I don't believe that's correct. Thank you for the opportunity, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Fab. I'll come back to a decision as to whether it's a point of order or not. Honorable Mbanza, point of order? Point of order, Chair. <clears throat> we should not uh, allow an animal farm uh, situation here. Uh, Honorable Beckman made the very same thing. Now, it's very important for us as politicians to be consistent also. The, what uh, Honorable Faber is complaining about now is what Honorable Beckman did earlier on. And I was very uh, respectful. I did not want to go the route he's going of saying point of order. We allowed uh, Honorable Bergman to finish, even if when he was out of order during that time. Now, Chair, you are going to make a ruling. You know what goes for uh, the other person must also go the same way. So I will just allow, ask you, Chair, to, in your ruling, uh, level the playing field that respect is a mutual exercise. You respect me, I respect you. You don't respect me, I don't respect you. Uh, so it mustn't be that some people are more equal than others. 
and others are, are very junior. So uh, that's what I'm appealing for, Chair, uh, because what uh, now is talking about is exactly what his colleague did. And uh, we respected it to the end. Now when the other person or any honorable member is doing and was not actually casting even, especially was just correcting, and then he is crying foul. I'm respecting chair, I'm asking chair just to lead us and which you have done very well, allow us uh, equal uh, treatment and uh, also let us treat one another with respect and knowing that we are, we've got equal opportunities and uh, we are equal here. Yeah. No one is more equal than the other. That's my request, Chair. Thank you very much. It is quite clear that it's inevitable, it's unavoidable. At some point during our interactions as politicians in our meetings, there's going to be tensions. There will be anxiety on some of the issues that are raised. On some issues we will go overboard. And if we do not focus on the strategic objective of what the meeting is about, the meeting is likely to lose direction. And I cannot be interjecting honorable members when they make points that may be making me uncomfortable as a chairperson. So I'm going to request the honorable members, all of you, to work on mastering the art of restraint. Even if you are provoked, it is our responsibility not to fall into the provocation. It doesn't matter where uh, it's coming from, so that we can, we can make progress. Also, if we scream at one another, we are not going to be able to hear each other. And we don't, when we don't hear each other, we will not be able to process what the other member is saying. And therefore your response is likely to be the one that is not exactly on what the other member was saying. So I'm going to request that as we have been doing all along, let's be calm, focus on the strategic objective. Yes, from time to time, there will be some sparks in the meeting. I, I understand. So um, that's, that's my plea, that, that we try and do that as, as honorable members. You must remember that uh, there are also other people who are watching how we conduct ourselves as honorable members. There's people from the media here, there are members of the public, and therefore the manner in which we deal with issues must be such that it defines the character that the members of the public and everybody else ex expects from the honorable uh, members. We, we, we can talk as much as you want, as long as we don't scream at each other and we don't cast aspersions uh, and so on. So I would request that we, we do that, honorable members. The, the, there are other general things which Honorable Fabo was saying and Honorable Nkosi. The only part where I'm going to make a ruling, Honorable Nkosi, is a statement that says, you know for sure exactly where he stands in as far as as, uh, the matter of Israel and Palestine uh, is concerned. Uh, I'm sure that point can be made differently uh, without necessarily being personal on him. So I will just request that maybe you raise it differently, that particular matter, so that it doesn't appear like uh, it's personal on the other uh, honorable member. I'll also request uh, Honorable Bergman and, and, and Faber that uh, we shouldn't in our expressions present ourselves in a manner that may send an unfortunate message that we undermine the intellectual capacity of other members. That's why other members will get, uh, will get uh, irritated because 
if you say that people just pick up things wherever they are in the magazines and they don't read any other literature to arrive at uh, empirical evidence assisting them to arrive at uh, empirical decisions, it's, it's a bit of a discomforting uh, argument. Now, English is not our, our first language. We may be using words in a manner in which uh, the English people themselves may not be uh, using them. So I'm requesting for calmness. Let's, let's remain calm. I'll give everybody the chance that uh, who wants to speak on, on any other matter. It's just that at some point, the meeting has to come to an end. We can't be in a meeting forever. So I'm giving you an opportunity to wind up your point, Honorable Lucas. No, Chair, I accept, I accept your ruling. Uh, and and, and uh, just to indicate that if you had listened to Honorable Bergman very carefully, it's mm. him who said that other members of this committee have particular views on the Israel-Palestine issue. So it's, oh, it, I doesn't didn't hear that. it doesn't come from me, it comes from him. Mm. Uh, I may have gone a, a bit fair, further to personalize it, but we know we've been in this committee uh, for two years now, and he's been in this committee for years. We bring different perspectives, ideological and otherwise, mm. on this issue. Mm. And it, it's important that uh, we listen to each other, but uh, to cast aspersion on us or on, on, on members of this committee uh, it goes, 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 goes both, both ways. I was saying, Chair, that uh, it may be constructive to revert to our earlier uh, suggestions in committee that uh, this matter of, of Israel and Palestine be placed on the agenda in the context of the regional politics uh, of the Middle East, uh, that we discuss this issue uh, uh, informed by what the department does, uh, what the approaches and strategic uh, uh, direction of uh, their interventions are. Um, and, but I, I just want to conclude by saying, Chair, that uh, the, the, it is clear that uh, we must differentiate between what is official government policy and what are our own uh, party political uh, stances on, on, the, on this issue. Thank you, Chair. I think we must agree that uh, we must make time so that we can come together to deal with uh, this matter of Israel and Palestine and, and maybe other uh, matters. I agree to that. So that's how we'll close this particular uh, matter. Honorable Deputy Minister. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chair, Chairperson, uh, for your indulgence. Uh, uh, no, Chair, I, I, I thought I must just probably amplify a, a, a few critical points. I think uh, Honorable Chair and the PC will recall that uh, we are still um, in the silver jubilee of celebrating the coming of age of our South African uh, constitution. And integral to the constitution comrades and friends is uh, of course our Bill of Rights. It therefore holds Chair that uh, our Bill of Rights um, uh, is an instruction note that when we implement uh, our overarching uh, foreign policy objectives, it should not be in conflict with the realization of the basic tenets of the Bill of Rights. That includes, uh, Honorable Chairperson, the, the right to self-determination, social justice, and uh, the freedom uh, of, of not only the African people, but the freedom of everyone else uh, in the rest of the world. The, the one foreign policy priority that we are pursuing and that we have uh, taken the PC in confidence is that of South to South cooperation, uh, Chairperson, that is obviously premised on uh, the solidarity work that we are doing. Um, and it becomes then an, a, a key and important uh, factor in our uh, overall uh, foreign uh, policy uh, repository. 
So for us, uh, colleagues, to earn the sight of the most vulnerable uh, becomes a, a very important uh, uh, point. One of the, maybe one of the issues, Chair, that have been raised earlier on, notwithstanding the uh, disclaimer that I may have as it relates to how members of the PC perceive um, uh, each other's knowledge, I thought that the, the one of the issues, as as the chairperson, uh, uh, you know, further contemplate, um, it seems th there's a suggestion that because the PC members um, have not had an opportunity, for example, to visit Ramallah um, or to visit Tel Aviv, that members necessarily would not have the same appreciation. And probably it's, it, it could be uh, an important uh, outbound mission for the PC uh, probably to undertake chair. Why I'm saying uh, that, uh, that uh, Chairperson is that the, the, the United Nations Charter has been consistently violated um, as it relates to the plight of the Palestine people is concerned. It will be important for the PC probably to have a more uh, 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 deeper appreciation with the visitation to Ramallah to look at what is the state of affairs in Gaza, East uh, Jerusalem and West, and, and West Bank, and whether there has been a unfortunate system of um, occupation that has been perpetuated in an unjust manner uh, that have actually violated flagrantly um, uh, the, the, the rights of the Palestine people. And, and I'm raising it, Chair, because the Human Rights uh, uh, Watch uh, last year has published a, a substantive report where they have characterized the special occupation of the of these Israeli people in Palestine, and I think it would be once again good for the committee to look at. Chair, I, I want to make a submission that is, it is not correct. Empirically, um, it, it is uh, not truthful that uh, Palestine Arabs coexist in a peaceful and in how many manner uh, in the state of Israel. In, including those uh, 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 Arabs that are actually cohabiting within the state uh, of Israel uh, along uh, Isra Israeli people. The conflict in 2021, Chair, that have actually broken out in uh, towns like Haifa, Jaffa, and Lohar within the borders of Israel um, has actually targeted 20% of the uh, of, of Arab uh, Palestines that exists uh, that actually lives within the state of Israel. And that 20% uh, of the Arab population uh, has obviously be, been targeted by uh, groups of uh, extreme uh, Zionists. So that is the, the, the facts at the end. The, the issue, Chair, is that uh, the fact that uh, you know, more than 700,000 Palestines has been dispossessed uh, by the lands of their forebears. Um, it is an empirical fact, but it is important probably for the P PC at one stage uh, or another to actually validate whether the, the illegal occupation has evidently resulted in the displacement of more than 60% of, of Palestine people within the West Bank, uh, uh, and that these Palestine communities has been balkanized uh, as into smaller subsets um, uh, uh, within the broader um, uh, annexation uh, process. I think what we, our foreign policy uh, uh, perspective, Chair, as it relates to the Palestine, is finding expression from the 1993 uh, Oslo Accords that uh, that very uh, you know through acclimation uh, have underpinned the solution of a two-state um, uh, matter where you have an independent uh, uh, state of Israel 
that must coexist uh, along with the independent uh, state of Palestine. And that is what the Os Oslo uh, Accords uh, have actually, uh, you know, uh, impute on us. And the Palestine, the solutions of the Palestine question, Chair, is, in, is integral to the Middle, uh, Middle East uh, peace uh, process. You, you can't have stability within the broader Middle East if the solutions of the, of, of the plight of the Palestine people have not been as uh, substantively resolved. So I, I just thought to, I, I must raise that point. Secondly, uh, Honorable Chairperson, uh, there has been a matter raised or suggestion made earlier on that the ARF um, <clears throat> is specifically uh, uh, only uh, an instrument at the disposal of Terco that should have very pertinent focus with, within the African continent. Um, if if, if uh, PC members look at the, <clears throat> the, the, the statutes that guides the ARF, I think colleagues will appreciate that it's an instrument at the disposal of Terco to enable us to advance um, our value system to build a better Africa and to build a better world. And the matter about the, the, the unilateral sanctions that has been put against the people of Cuba, Jefferson, um, the, the fact that the Hams uh, Burton Title III Extraterritorial uh, Act uh, has been promulgated by the United uh, States, which have led to large scale um, social um, uh, uh, challenges and food security in Cuba is something in terms of our foreign uh, policy uh, value system that obviously we can't ignore. And it's for that reason, Chair, that we, as I have indicated earlier on, has allocated uh, 50 million for the issues of uh, food security purposes, which I think is a very noble cause and that it funds our Ubuntu and humanitarian uh, diplomacy. We do so, Chair, being mindful about the fact uh, about the, the role that your Henry, Henry Reeves International Medical uh, Brigades have played. For example, just recently during the COVID-19 pandemic in South Africa, where over 239,000 South African patients has actually been privileged to the treatment of uh, uh, the Cuban uh, doctors, for example. So I thought I must raise that, but more importantly, Chair, we, we, we don't pursue our, our foreign policy as it relates to solidarity uh, in conflict with uh, issues about economic uh, diplomacy. I can, uh, for example, uh, confirmed to the uh, portfolio committee chairperson that because of our north to south cooperation, uh, where we have, have in instruction note uh, when we implement our foreign policy that at all times maximize cooperation with your more industrialized north. We, for example, chairperson, if you look at just the AGOA trade uh, agreement between South Africa and the US. It has resulted on in over 173 billion rand of South Africa's worth of uh, trade between South Africa uh, and the US. And we, we are raising it, Chair, that in, if you look at the, the very uh, ambitious target set by the President, uh, 1.7 trillion of our overarching uh, economic diplomacy uh, initiatives comes from, from, from the side of Europe. It therefore says that at all times, when we have pursued our foreign uh, policy implementation, uh, we have erred on the side of uh, making sure we advance the South African uh, 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 national interest uh, as outlined in the South African national interest uh, document. Chair. Lastly, Honorable Chairperson, Pan-Africanism uh, uh, is, is the key priority of our foreign policy uh, priority. We have, of course, been the driver of the African Continental Free Trade uh, Agreement because I think we have re realized, Chairperson, that that type of an instrument, together with the South African Customs Union, um, has a very, is a very potent uh, 
instrument at our disposal to unlock and enhance uh, our economic diplomacy issues. For example, Chairperson, just uh, in 2021, we have concluded the exchange of tariffs offerings. Um, we, we have a concluded exchange of tariff offerings. We, we have had the, the ratifications of your tripartite free trade agreements and impl in, in implementation of your concomitant uh, TFTA uh, uh, instrument as it relates to, for example, Comesa is concerned. So we are, apart from our mediation and peace and security efforts that uh, Ambassador Lossi and the team spoken about in relation to the, our facilitation efforts in the kingdom of uh, uh, Lesotho, our uh, 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 facilitation efforts to ensure there's a national uh, dialogue in Iswatini, and our troop and us being a, a, a member of the troop contributing countries as it relates to the conflict in Kappa Delgado, uh, Chairperson, we have systematically been, been very firm on the economic diplomacy uh, aspect. And I just thought that at, at a high level uh, summary, uh, you know, that we take the peace and confidence on, on those issues, but we have not our solidarity uh, work has not uh, uh, ensured that we neglected part of our economic diplomacy work. And we would uh, want to come at a particular stage and uh, in terms of our different uh, branches, a different continental work, would want to take the peace in confidence as it relates to what our economic diplomacy have actually uh, uh, meant uh, for foreign direct investment uh, into South Africa. Uh, having said that, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very much, Honorable Deputy Minister. The Rivocrats led by Ambassador Lucy, that made the presentation here and all other ambassadors and representatives of other foreign nations that were on this platform, the media, South Africans who have made joined us in the process of this interaction, honorable members of the portfolio committee, everything we do, everything we say, it's in the context of building a united, democratic, non-racial, non-sexist, and a prosperous society. When you see us sometimes as if there are sparks among us, it's because we want to achieve that strategic objective. This is how we come to the end, honorable members, of uh, today's interaction. Thank you very much and enjoy your evening. Taman Sintlebaiz. Zialibuha, Chairperson. Chairperson. That's all good. Found that you can get a permission. Chair. 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 Mon Montrinic say young yo. Can't you get a permiss a gavel? Oh, when our permiss a little so only most creamy or Sansona Lentos and Toyto Bates the move. It's a ponsa or on a little so I got a bona to go for my sorrow and that little for that whole of Helen Gidelamas of it. No, and Tony Batlan, we hear the good Kilaga Ganagon or Kitime foam. No, and the good Utime. Utime screen is in phone. Oh, screen. Hey, oh, to phone. I phone. I can't get to phone. I can't get to phone.